Welcome to the Linkcast. This is the John Bone Community's Guild Wars 2 podcast for the week of September 28th. I'm your host, Sol Confess Cynic, and joining me today is Nubarama. <sighs> Durin! I have the internet again. <laughs> Wait, so you're not dead? I'm not actually dead, no. Wait, did Bullshit. you listen to last week's show? You don't listen I, to the podcast. No. I didn't listen. Well, I didn't have internet, so I couldn't I couldn't really Oh, yeah, to there you go. Oh, screwdrivers okay. didn't yeah. kill you? <laughs> no, they... they <laughs> God, they should have. <laughs> Jesus. I actually went back and listened to like just a little bit of that episode, and <laughs> I had to turn it off. Good God. And I didn't even get into the worst part. I, I think um, I think we had a listener saying that there was like a, a, a poor excuse for like, a, or, or an example on an episode or something like that. It was, it was pretty... It's pretty, it's pretty damning, and I, that means we pretty much nailed what I wanted to do yeah. for that segment. <laughs> We've succeeded um, of the like, mission success. We achieved exactly what we wanted. Yeah, anyway. That's exactly what we want. <laughs> um, also joining us today is returning guest, Robin. How are you doing? Hey, hey, hey. And uh, a, new, a new guest. Our, one of our new officers as well in Lincoln Forest. The uh, Lincoln Forest Wolf Wolf guy. Doubleton. Hi, right, happy to be here. Hey. hey. All right, cool. So what you guys been doing this week? New Barama, what have you been up to this week? I read a bunch of books, like you did last week. I read books. Oh, yeah. Except instead of so, shitty fiction books, I read real books. Did you? So this, how long have you been on Goodreads? Because you only added me to Goodreads like this week. Yeah, Goodreads is really fucked up because it's like, you, you're like, oh, I want to see which of my friends are on Facebook have Goodreads. And then it <laughs> adds... Everyone, everyone. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? No, no. Yeah, uh, so I've actually, been on Goodreads for like a year. But I actually wanted it to do that though. I, I was when I when I added all my friends in very commas to um to Goodreads. No, the weird thing is it doesn't add it. So it adds around like ten at a time, but ten mm-hmm. like every couple of days. So you don't know really? when it's gonna start adding people next. <laughs> it's like really creepy. I don't know. <laughs> And it added oh, the man. people. I don't know. I really don't want to see anyone. I, I find out that me and Noob have like entirely disparate tastes in books. Like, does that I, really I, surprise I read you read books. Cynic, yeah, does that really surprise you? Reads, I don't know what he reads. <laughs> Cynic, that, you know like, what Noob reading is, is all for? Like, it's for the. It's for getting knowledge. It's for obtaining knowledge. Yeah. You read it for the wrong reasons. Like he 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 reads veggies, and I read like Fifty chips Shades and of Grey. Um, like some book about an Oedipus complex. It's disgusting, Cynic. You shouldn't sexualize what? books like that. Wait, I thought you were talking about your own fucking connect- collection. Like his collections, collections all like fucking Nazis, North Korea, <laughs> um, like deconstructions of political views, and mine's all like fucking. So he's basically he's, he's Robert his revolution. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's revolution. He's, it's it's weird because Noob's actually aiming for like a political. Um, that's not true. That's not true. I have this book called, um, well, I don't know. I don't read nonfiction. You're right. I can't even yeah, make up no, I, mean, I mean, like, your, your planned future. You want to be a politician, don't you? No. Really? I want to be a daycare I, is, worker. Why are you working for? He wants, he wants to be the Canadian Bill Nye. <laughs> Bill Nye. <laughs> oh, God. I really feel like you, when you guys are naming off the, the other person's books, you're just staring at your own bookshelf. So secretly, <laughs> I by mean, the way, Cynic, you do live in Australia, and in Risk, true. that C- is the Cynic's, place to take first. Cynic's favorite book is <laughs> The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. It's not my favorite, but it's it's, it's like, um, I think it arranges my favorite by... <laughs> it's telling me my order? favorite book is Decision Points by George W. Bush. Alphabetical order. We have to have a talk after this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then it's the impossible state by Victor Cha. Indeed. Yeah. Anyway, any other than reading New Barama? Um, I was playing Hearts of Iron three. Very good. What's game. that? Um, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a simulation. Have Have you guys ever played Rayplay? 
<laughs> Can't say that's on my list of games. Check. Well, let me check my Steam list. Nope. Let me check on Virtual Hang Stalker on. with the at. No. Okay. Then never mind. <clears throat> that's what I've been playing. <laughs> oh fuck, Durin. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's it's a really great World War Two military sim. It's like grand strategy. It's really great. It's what, a little bit complicated. Play? Really fun. Well, it, yeah, I was gonna say like like oh. very important to note. It is very complicated for noob, but the guy who plays fucking Victoria all the time, and that game yeah. looks like just a spreadsheet game. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. It's, it's so... like it's like a board game, except it's really good. I don't know. I, it's I I, I I don't know. I looked at it on Steam and every single screenshot except for one. I, I don't know what is that. <laughs> it's like you want to sell this <laughs> game to people. Let's show off all of these menus and graphs and and ledgers. Yeah, like, it looks about as exciting as Football game. Manager, which is one of the most exciting games on Steam. I know someone <laughs> who will swear by Football Manager. I have a friend who has over five hundred hours in Football Manager. Is that Shin Boy? I wouldn't be surprised if Shin Boy is no. I was in. No, I don't think he likes Football Manager. Really? That, I thought, that I thought would be... most soccer guys liked Football Shin Manager. Shin Boy's a soccer guy? Shin Boy's definitely a soccer guy. I, I, I always saw him more of like a... I don't know. I actually don't know. I don't know. What I was, I was going to say like a sport, but I don't know. Hey, what, noob, you were just... Okay, you were just American today. football. I, I, no, I was, just, I was so expecting you to bring Rayplay back around. I know, right? That's, I what, like, that's yeah. what I mean. Like He's, he's clearly <laughs> off his game today. <laughs> yeah, well, he is under the weather. He That's is true. definitely. If you hear coughing during the episode, it's new Rama. Yeah. But um, Durin, what are you up to this? I week? have diabetes. Uh, I moved this week. Diabetes doesn't make you cough. <laughs> yeah, I have I have the knee diabetes, where it's like there's diabetes cells in my knees, and my knees will explode. No, and that causes you to cough. What? Yeah, what, diabetes. Talk, what, that what do you think about? diabetes is? <laughs> it's like cancer where there's diabetes cells and they like <laughs> gather up and build up in your knees and then your knees right, blow dude. up and you die instantly. I would apologize. I think, you, I think we, we need to start reading more diabetes. medical books. <laughs> Whatever, man. I think, no, I think we need to leave him in a channel with Sookie for about five minutes and have him explain what diabetes <laughs> is. Ah. <sighs> uh. I've never actually asked Suki for crazy like um, medical stuff. I don't ever. think I'd want Suki to be my doctor, to be honest. He's German. He'd be perfect. Yeah, you know yeah, what? It, it would just okay, be you know what? I'm not going to go around back to the point. three podcasts ago talking about Germans. Let's stop that right here. <laughs> <laughs> I meant it as a positive this time. I have a anyway, lot of old, so, I don't know about okay, German so, doctors, man. German doctors. So, Duren, do you have <laughs> yeah, an accurate I, idea of what diabetes is? <laughs> I do because my mother has it. Uh, it is in fact not cancer. No, yeah, it's it's um, pretty it not? accurately not cancer. So it's more like <laughs> AIDS. Correct. Um, not <laughs> quite. Uh, it's more like diabetes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty accurate. Does she have it in the knees? That. Like I do. <laughs> I got diabetes of the knees. So anyway, what are you, um, what are you so, up to this week? <laughs> so yeah, I, I I moved this week, so uh, not a whole lot of Guild Wars two for me this week. Uh, not a whole lot of internet for me this week. I I, I mostly held myself over by watching Netflix on my phone. Um, no, I, but, I still don't understand how you can live without the internet for a week. I was at the library playing RuneScape. <laughs> <laughs> I had internet at work, so week. I could I could check like the, the giant bomb forums and watch the videos. To be honest, like I I about the week on, on there pretty good. Okay. But, yeah, my, my internet access was very, very limited for the week. Um, but what, but, okay, Nubarama, how, what was the longest you've been without the internet for? Mm, a week and a half. At, when was that? And what, what was the context? Well, well like within the last 10 years. Um, <laughs> so that's yeah. like, that's about 10 years out of 12 years of my life. That's quite a bit. Um, the context? <laughs> um, was, I think I was moving. Yeah, moving. Oh, yeah. I saw my computers, Thurbleton? I play games. What was the longest you've been without the internet for? Um, Around two weeks. I, I, see, I, I think I've got you all beat. No, oh, I, wait, no, that's not true. That's not true. I went camping for, or like on a trip for three weeks with no internet. Yeah, that's, that's what mine was. I was doing a climbing trip in Kentucky. Okay, cool. And uh, Revan, what was the longest you've been in, uh, without internet for? I, I want to say a week. See, I, I got you all beat. Well, what? in in terribleness. My longest time was um and this is including like trips to india and shit like being in the middle of nowhere my longest time without the internet was four days 
Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> it I lost. thought you were going to beat us by, like, you know, not being on the internet for a long <laughs> yeah, time. Like, no. A month without the internet or something like that. No. <laughs> for, Which, obviously, that's the thing is, like, obviously, because you're in Australia. Yeah, no, exactly. We, you, um, your strength. No, that yeah, we, four days. I, I was... Whew. <laughs> wow. You know, you I were was bleeding different. out of the eyes. That was eyes. legitimately difficult for me. You had a bull. Yeah. Uh, day three, I'd you like, started losing it. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 when I go to India, I between trips to like cruises and stuff because it's like pretty cool, like backwater cruises, like river cruises and stuff. Like between that, I would like hit up a hotel, or something, and I'd get my fix. Like I, <laughs> I cannot live without anymore. Well, that, that's, why I had to, I, that's why I had to clarify. Like I went without internet at home for a week, but I was at work, and at work I didn't have access to it. So oh, yeah, that's I got my that's daily weak. fix there. Oh, this is the, like exactly. the longest like without straight up internet because uh. I think it might actually have been like a day. Might have been the longest I've ever gone without the internet. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so hard now to go without the internet. Wait, you have it on your wait, phone. Wait, wait, no. Sorry. So when hur- when um there was a hurricane in DC one time, I went maybe three days. Okay. Whoa. Well, fuck. What's the longest time you've been without Guild Wars since it's come out? Oh. Uh. Shit. No, I'm asking this specifically to Revan. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. Well, yeah. that's I'm trying yeah. to think. Let's, more than a day, more than twenty four hours, hours or less than twenty four hours. <laughs> Would you? You're saying like, have I been away from this game for more than twenty four hours at a time? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. No. no. Oh, <laughs> what about Sorry. twelve hours? Uh, we're just gonna break it down. No. It's been a twelve hour window where you've been. Okay. Wait, you, you cut up be, uh, including sleeping time. Have you? Oh, been... including sleep. Uh, yeah, probably more than twelve at some point. All right, good, at least. Thank I was you. Just, I was saying, like, when I was like, old... He wakes up and just logs into the game just to yeah, stare at it for yeah, a few seconds crazy. before he has to leave and go do what he needs to do for the day. <laughs> just like trading posts with his right hand, left hand yeah. brushing his teeth. Just no, no, you know, right. like, you know, like you're in some in sort of like, like wait until they get that mobile app out. Depressing life. <laughs> you're like in the middle of some sort of like battlefield. It's depressing and you look at the picture of your wife or something. It's like that with yeah, Guild Wars. You just take a look at the Guild Wars world and you're like... Back to this depressing life again. My schedule is set up in a way that most days I can wake up at a... I, well, some days I have to wake up around 7 to get to class. But I'll wake up at 7 and just... After I'm done getting myself ready, I'll just log on to Guild Wars, check the trading post. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like it's like you're like some sort of stockbroker and you really... What are you checking on there? Like I said, just wait yeah. until the, the um, phone app comes out and he will never not be in the game. <laughs> Yeah, like he'll just always have the t- chat open when I'll be on his phone. All right, seeing as how seeing as how I take my laptop to class with me. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> but wait, you so really, you really play you it in class? Though? What Do on the really trading post demands that attention from you? Oh, I just usually just log on for like five seconds to see how the conduits are doing. The conduits, like the, the Mystic Forge conduit. Yeah, I just want to see how the conduits doing. The chest. <laughs> how's like his, how's that been his, going? His job. <laughs> it's slowly been going down. I want. I'm waiting for that thing to get over ten ten gold. I want yeah. to go over 10 gold at some point. Yeah, and it will. Like, unless you can keep making them, which I don't think you can. You know, definitely. you can keep making them. It's just that there is a finite number of supplies to make them now. Before yeah. there was an infinite number of supplies. So people, people are buying the parts, I assume. People are then... buying the parts for more than it costs to, to just straight up buy it. So but dumb. So buy dumb. the two yellow pieces, you spend about six gold. <laughs> And they're like, they were like five gold or something for the actual full conduit a while ago. It's crazy. It's, it's, crazy. it's about it's about six for it now, and right. it was just you need you spend six getting two pieces, and you still need the fifty Mister Coins, oh, man. and you need to spend uh twenty, maybe thirty on the node. Right. See, I, I'm so happy that when I, I was when those were still a thing where you can, when you can make them, um. I've made the decision to just buy, wait for them to go down to five gold, and just buy the the entire um, Mystic Forge conduit without nev- without ever bothering with like the crafting all that bullshit RNG crap. So I'm so happy I made the decision. Like buying for five gold was one of the best purchases I've made in Guild Wars Two. Like, straight up, I have the Mystic Forge everywhere I go now, which is awesome. And again, I didn't have to go through all the cr- the fucking hoops. But oh, wait, was I liked it the going through the hoops because I made I money. That was your best purchase. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Did it wasn't remember? the Berserker's chest. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why would you like that? God. Oh. Um, what's wrong, Cynic? What were we saying? Oh yeah, N- Robin. What are you been up to this week? Oh, hang on. Um, I did play a game. Oh, oh, did you play a game? Sort of. Uh, what, what was it? When I got when I, the first thing I got set up in my house was my TV and my um, PlayStation Three, so that I would have Netflix on a television. 
Okay, um, yep. And so having that stuff set up. Wait, that doesn't, down- that doesn't work. You couldn't get on the internet. Though. No, we had internet as of Wednesday. I just didn't have anything to use it on actually set up yet. <laughs> um, Wait, okay. Whoa, until, whoa, whoa. Until yesterday. Whoa. whoa. When I move into a house, the first thing I hook up yeah, is my PC computer. and death. They yeah. couldn't send anybody until Wednesday. What do you mean they couldn't send anybody? Do you have like they had to send or the the cable company had to send somebody out to activate the cable line? No, not even that. I was like straight up. I, I, right, you I, call I, them I, beforehand before you move. That hey, we're moving in here. Well, yeah, that is Yeah, we that, kind of we we waited to the last minute on that part. Definitely. Yeah, that's the, again, like again, poorly planned on your part. But just in general, I didn't even, I didn't even like order the the uh, moving truck until the night before. What is wrong with you? It's what? not like it was a fucking what? surprise. Hey, yeah, surprise! Come on, we're it's not like you were sick last week or anything. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> you weren't in a, a like. Screwdriver induced coma. <laughs> <laughs> that screwdriver induced coma was his own doing. Yeah. Like exactly. while we like, were joking around about him dying, he was really on the verge of death. He was in the hospital and everything. <laughs> I went to visit God, him. I felt like poisoning. The next day. Oh god, that next day. It's, it's like he's actually lived a machine for pigs. <laughs> 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 Wakes up, where am I? What is this place? Uh, so I, I, yeah, I again, got the TV hooked up. Uh, first got- thing you do is PC. I, I, because there's stuff on your PC. There's, there's well, the, movies. The, the there's... problem with it was that my, my PC was in parts around my house. Because when How all did packed, you let this happen? Because my wife. What? Died. Oh. That is so she. That is right first mistake. Party. Because we didn't, have, we didn't have everything like completely packed when moving day came. So uh, my brothers and, and myself, like we, we all moved the stuff that was packed in the furniture and everything while she finished packing stuff. Oh, you procrastinator. Wait a second. Again, screwdrivers. <laughs> again, first thing I pack. And then the screwdrivers no, no, no. blame you, Duran. First thing I pack the day before I move PC. That number one thing that goes in the box because I have to, to, extent, to be back yes, out fast. But my, a lot of these parts I did not trust being in a PC or in a, in a box, so I wanted them kind of out separately. Well, for me, packing is putting them in the backseat of my car. Yeah, I don't. Well, I, yeah, when the you, PC when goes you, with the car, everything else goes in the moving truck. Yeah, I'm exactly. If need be. Yeah, I, I, again, poorly planned. Durin has like the worst. Well, my mouse was already broken. I did not want that in a box either. So like things got so things just, like, basically got separated. Crazy priorities. Like, yeah. like the, the worst decisions were made along the entire like, way. What, for what were move. one of the first? Oh yeah, things absolutely. You Durin. Uh, one of the first things I packed. Yeah. Um, I want to say was my video game, my console video games, and my DVDs and Blu-rays. That's. When he I moved, kept yeah, that's DVDs. about what I set up. I'm never going to keep my DVDs when I move. You're not going to keep Rip them? What? I don't know. I don't think I will. I'll, I'll keep my Blu-rays, but Rip I don't them. think I'll keep my DVDs. I have a lot of DVDs. Exactly. And I've never used them. I'll never, ever use them ever again. Well, the thing oh is, like, God. I'm not going to rip them because I, I don't have the space for that. So, yeah, I just I, watch I, them. I just rather it's have the like DVDs be around. It's not like oh, 240p them. or something. It's DVDs aren't terrible. <laughs> They, they are terrible. They're 480p. They're the fucking worst. Well, they're I guess rush. I'd remember, like, like I, I kind of, I don't really even buy Blu-rays because I just stream everything. So, like, DVD quality is kind of still okay because it's it's better than, for, like, streaming is basically DVD quality. Like, you're not really getting Blu-ray yeah. quality ever, ever when you're streaming. So I no. stopped buying Blu-rays Given that that's after what the majority I of my... my part one disc for the Pacific and it stopped working. <laughs> Even though that's oh. the majority of what my 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 TV watching or movie watching is is streaming stuff. Like I'm I'm used to that resolution. I don't need Blu-ray resolution. The convenience of streaming is more than makes up for the the, the increased fidelity. So I, like, see, I'm I'm the kind of person who I buy the Blu-ray to something and then I well I don't rip it anymore because this takes up too much space. So I just get H.264 like pirated copies. Um, oh, unbelievable! It like saves the time Pirate. that I already have the fucking Blu-ray copy. But even then, I don't watch that. Like when I feel when I want to sit down and watch The Road, for example, I put in the Blu-ray. Like I, I, even though I have the like pirated Why would copy, you watch The Road it's on so my computer. I don't, I don't, I don't buy Blu-rays. Like I'd rather just wait until it goes on Netflix and then watch it there. But what I'm saying is, like, even if I have a convenient option, in my case, just having literally the MP4 on my hard drive ready to mm-hmm. go. And my, my, my computer's hooked up to my TV. I still watch the Blu-ray instead. Because yeah, I just... mean, if I, ha- if I had the Blu-ray there available, I would obviously watch oh. that over, like, the DVD or over a stream mm. version of it. But when the streaming option is so much more appealing cheap. than it's going so down to the store cheaper. and buying the Blu-ray. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus it's way Christ. cheaper. Yeah, it's way cheaper. It's way easier just to do that. 
I, you know, I very rarely watch movies multiple times. So actually just like renting it through Amazon on, on my, um, my, my PS3 or something or my right. computer is so much easier and cheaper than the Blu-ray option. Like it just, it doesn't, the fidelity isn't enough to get me to go that route. Like I feel like Blu-ray is, Blu-ray is not going to be around as long as DVD was just because of this whole streaming revolution. Um, uh, and a lot of people yeah. are going to be willing to kind of give up that, that, um, for the convenience. It's all about the convenience. The convenience. But exactly, I, yeah. I, like, I, it's I like really it. unfortunate for Blu-ray, because Blu-ray Especially is... Especially when I see very... stuff like um, like the full-scale conversions of videos. I, I think... I've forgotten the company that does it, but there's a company that, that gets old movies and does, like, um, 4K or 8K scans of the actual film. Oh, yeah, film. yeah. Um, well, and, like, even for Blu-ray, there, there are some movies that I will watch. Like, I, I, w- I will go and buy the Avengers Blu-ray. Like, I'm not going to watch the stream version of that. I will, I'll actually spend the money in the, you know... The, Go through the effort to go down to Best Buy and pick that up and buy it. Man, yeah, there, there, there are, are some some, movies. There are a few films that are yeah. just like, well, it's I, I it, enjoy it's kind it so of, much. I want to make the the company know that make more like this. Yeah, like That's it's, true it's, as it's well. kind of like that idea of like there are certain movies that I have no problems going to the movie theater and seeing. Like there's the movie theater like experience. Black Hawk there's Down. certain movies that that, that like fit very well Hawk into that. Down. But then there are other <laughs> movies where I'm like, oh, I'll wait till it releases on streaming and, and then rent it there. Uh, anyway, so anyway, video games. <laughs> I'll make this short at this wait, point. Wait, what, uh, what about all the other on, people on, on, the, on the PlayStation, and, right? Yeah, uh, on the PlayStation. Yeah, on PlayStation what did you play? 3. Didn't this get started because you're like, there's this one video game I wanted to play, or <laughs> I might have played, and then you went so, on this entire pen. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, well, welcome to the, welcome to the Lincoln Cast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I downloaded the demo for Resident Evil Six. Oh, oh does that look That's like complete trash? To do this week. Um, I think the people that are saying that are being typical um, internet trolls, like reactions to everything, because everything is bit... yeah, everything right. everything is terrible on the internet. Um, okay. There are issues with it, definitely. Has anyone else here played it? Nope. 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 Okay. That's a, that, that's I don't think I've ever played a Resident <laughs> Evil game. Um, Me the, either, the biggest actually. issues really that, that, that are there, uh, the camera is entirely too close in. Like your character takes up a third of your screen. Way, way too close else are you going to see Chris Redfield's big guns? Uh, no, they actually <laughs> dramatically reduced his big guns. He, he's off the uh, steroids. What? Right? No. <laughs> no, no, more, no, no more boulder rage. punching. No more boulder punching. <laughs> That um, was the best part I didn't play through his, game. though. I played through, <laughs> I played through Leon's because I wanted to see their new take on kind of the classic Resident Evil, which is what Leon's scenario is supposed to be. And for the most right. part, it does pretty well at that. Um, okay. There were some issues, though. Like I said, the camera was a real big issue. Uh, there was also one thing that really bothered me, and a lot of people have been talking about this on the forums, too. I mean, this is one point I absolutely agree with them on. There's a lot of points where they clearly are setting up for jump scares. You'll see a zombie kind of hunched against a wall or something, and you know that jump- zombie is going to jump up at you. You know it's going to. So you aim right. your gun at it and you shoot it, and it's invulnerable. It's like it's not even there. Oh, it doesn't what? become active Crazy. until you get close enough. What? Once you get close enough, then it jumps up, and then you can shoot it. <sighs> and that happens at least three or four times through the throughout the demo. Is Ashley in that <laughs> game? Uh, no, Ashley's not in this game. However, Sherry Damn. from Resident Evil Two is in this game. Um, the other the other major issue like I have rocket is rocket breasts or whatever they're called. <laughs> You don't want you don't um, want to go least, do some overtime with her. At least twice throughout the demo, there were um, instances where a zombie would lunge at me, and I had no chance to get away from it. I have uh, no control over getting away. I'm going to take the damage, and I have to do their little mini game to get out of it. Well, how much of this is like holdover for? Because again, I, I me and Noob haven't really played much of Resident Evil, uh, if at any at all. So forced. Uh, uh, lunges and stuff. I have never seen that in Resident Evil before. It could have maybe happened in a game, but I've never, I don't recall it ever happening, and I've played all of the major ones. Um, right. The, the, zombies, the zombies laying in places, you were always able to shoot them beforehand. Even back going as far as the original Resident Evil, there would be a zombie laying on the ground, and if you aimed your gun at them and aimed down at them, you could shoot them, and then they would stand up. Right. Like, you could actually like damage them before they had a chance to come after you. So okay. that is definitely new to this, and I don't know why the fuck they decided to do that. Um, the camera mm. angle thing is definitely new to this game. Uh, it was... If, if five felt closer in than four, 
but this one feels even closer than that. And so it's just, I think that the idea is they're trying to give you this like claustrophobic kind of feel or like you are right. there with your character. Uh, but a lot of times what ends up happening is it just, it, it makes it very awkward trying to uh, maneuver through the game world, especially in Leon sections, because it's a lot of like narrow corridors. So I, I want to move on, but just just a little thing because you, you've you've probably played these games recently. Well, you have played these games recently. Um, what do you think that with Dead Space and similar, the West has significantly taken over from the East in terms of scary games? I I would to some extent, but I wouldn't use Dead Space as an example only because. Dead Space 1 was really good for a, a, a survival horror experience. Dead Space 2, yeah. maybe to a lesser extent, but still you know, pretty good. Yeah, and Dead Space uh, from everything I'm like seeing in Dead Space 3, it looks like a fucking action yeah. game. Like, it, it looks like Dead Space is Resident, or, yeah, Resident Evil 5. Like it's, it's so clearly sad. going to be action. Is Mila Jovovic in I think Resident part of the problem is a lot of them in these <laughs> horror games, they, they in these com- these you know commercial big-budget horror games, they have this, this feeling like they need to keep things moving. Like they need to have this, right. this very deliberately quicker pace there's not um, enough downtime that's like the opposite of what you want for something yeah, like exactly like horror. like you look at, at, at games like amnesia and and more recently slender and the slower pace is what builds the tension that's what made the first yeah. dead space so good yeah like walking through the forest in slender um it's the walking part that's yeah. the fucking terrible no you, you got to take away all of the weapons well, and- so your protagonist can't fight yeah, that's also like the feeling of vulnerability, forced vulnerability. Yeah, that, that, that's what made the Fatal Frame series so good. I was playing right. this this mod for Half Life Two called I forget what it was called, Corsakova or something like that. Yeah, Corsakova. And even though there's one. weapons in this, I was so scared that when I first saw this <laughs> mist kind of thing, it was so dumb. It wasn't actually scary, but the atmosphere <laughs> was done so well that mm-hmm. rather than fighting it, I ran into a closet and I locked myself in. In a game, yep. <laughs> and I'm like, and I think that's one thing that a lot of these bigger budget horror so games great. don't get is they try to they try to to pull the horror from the creatures and from like you know these jump scares and and things like that. Where where the real horror comes from in in, in games like Slender and Amnesia and Corsicovia, um is from the environment. Like yeah, the atmosphere. Well, the, the horror is atmosphere the, goes the a long greatest way. thing. The greatest fear to humanity is the unknown. Like that's number one right. fear. It, it, you lose a lot of that when you see like the monster's face. It's great when you can't see anything. Exactly. Like if you see the monster constantly near the start like, of the game, oh, you're okay. doing it wrong. Yeah, like, you should. That's, that's that's again. That's what made Amnesia so good because like when you would stare at the monster, that made you go insane. So it actively made you not want to look at the monster. Yeah, uh, that makes it even better. It. Anyway, Revan, what are yes. you up to this week? Um, playing a little Still bit more Madden. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, I almost played my 3DS, but the battery wasn't working. <laughs> Great. That's because it'd been so long since I charged it. I Wait, what? What almost week. got you to play it? I was uh trying to make my backpack lighter, and then I realized I hadn't taken it out when I moved. Uh huh. Like, yeah, I should. Yeah, I should probably use this at some point. <laughs> you just just looking. It's like, oh, there's no power, and there's these right next, like the chargers on the table, and it's like. Eh, charger too much would, effort. No, the charger <laughs> was on top of the it was on top of when I pulled it out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> so that I looked at it I was like I should probably charge this, so I just plugged it in and just walked and went to class. It's like, oh, oh, I'll charge when yep. I get back. There you go. And yeah, you I never forgot, touched I, it again. I pulled out my Vita. No, this I week. had to move it off my desk to put my laptop back there. Back there. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I. I'm. Handheld gaming is in a dead? weird place at the moment. <laughs> it's not. Point. No, I don't think it's a, it's dead. I think it's it's in a weird place partly because there are two fairly new handhelds out right now, and yeah, I think a and year from now it's going to be very different. Um, just, uh, I mean, this, this, the DS was kind way. of crap when it launched. In terms for of for like, me, um, Persona Three Portable was the highlight of the PSP. Yep. And I still the Persona for Golden Edition is probably going to be like a, a significant moment for the, P- the PS Vita. I'm, I'm going to buy might, a PS Vita for that. I might ask yeah, like, for a Vita for Christmas just for Persona Four Golden. Yeah, I know dude. how everything in that game goes because or most of the stuff in that game goes because the quick looks. Uh, yeah, looks endurance. Well, the, the, the yeah, endurance like, for me, I, I've I've got way too much way too much experience with that game, but I still want to play Golden. Like, I've got I've got a Vita Vita, and literally the, the only games I've played on it, I have Uncharted. I played a little bit of it. But most of my time has been spent playing either um, uh, Persona 3 or Final <laughs> Fantasy 7. 
<laughs> Man. My, my Vita is a handheld oh, PS2. I could, yeah. I, spent, oh God, I, spent, I could play. What was it? $250? Does the scaling look PS2. good on Persona 3 Portable on, that, on the Vita? Does it what now? Does the scaling look good on Persona 3? Um, Yeah. I mean, the game looks fine. It looks, I mean, it's the, well, I, I, it's. As long as the art doesn't look, because like part of the Persona series has been like the um, the animated art. So yeah. like, for um, for people and stuff, they always put like the, the f- fully re- like fully drawn out I- images of characters. Does that look good on the screen, or does it look better? Or um, is it low res? I don't know if it looks better because I didn't buy it until the Vita, so I never played it on the PSP, <laughs> and, and I don't remember oh. the original one either. Um, Man, but that's it a doesn't. Good game. It doesn't look like like blurry or like like you would expect if it's kind of blown up. Right, um, it, it doesn't look like that. But it, it still looks pretty sharp, and I think a lot of that just has to do with it being such a sharp screen in the first place. That's awesome. That that, that is cool. I'm, I've been waiting for um, what was it Peace Walker to to get my Vita? I, I have I've had Peace Walker for ages, but I'm, I'm going to play it when I get a Vita. That's going to be an interesting. I, ho- I hope MGS holds up. I haven't played an MGS game for a while. Anyway, Thurbleton, Double Thurb. What do you mean? I wasn't done. It's Thurbleton. Excuse um, moi. Wait. I'm a little hurt. Oh, yeah, oh, 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 oh. Robin. Oh, yeah, Robin, pl- yeah, finish up. What, what I played you the original Guild Wars. Whoa. Whoa. What? How many what? people were there? Do you see people? Yeah, there were people. Did you wow. get, like, two frames a second? Because apparently the servers is fucking borked now. No, uh, mine was fine. I, wait, have you played much of the original Guild Wars before? Uh, I had factions before. Hey. Yeah. Oh, so you ran into role players in Xingji. How was that? <laughs> no, because uh, I realized I had factions and I wanted the main game, so I just went and bought the platinum You're edition. Crazy! You're fucking right. crazy. So I got, You're I got the original. Crazy. Was it prophecies? And I got Eye of the North. How do you like You're it? Crazy. Uh, it's been fun so far. It's been uh, being a ranger and having the pet and having the little fire imp they gave me that I can summon up until level twenty. I can out alt tab out of that game in the middle of combat. <laughs> Why do you opt to see if people don't know people don't know Revan? Revan, Has the first time he goes through things, in the game. he t- he tends to go to classes or builds that allow him for like absolute minimal effort at the game. Like he just, he just specifically goes for like for this this case it was Guardian. He built it as tanky as he could because so he could just alt tab out and just like do other things while playing. I Guild only alt tab out in water combat, and that is I don't even have to build tanky. It is just the one attack on the trident. <laughs> heals you and does <laughs> and does damage and uh, you also have the passive heal so it's like they're not doing enough damage to out uh, outpace the heals god damn it god damn it fucking guards anyway so, that, so how, how do you like uh guild wars one in general i like it i have to get used to not being able to move in combat that is that's the big thing right just any any game that has a skill bar based combat system i just, not, I just yeah like not realizing my my auto attack is not one and just pressing that repeatedly yeah it's just <laughs> space or like, it's just attack this is just an attack but that's it's know. click on know. the character once yeah i just i i can't go back i play, i went back with durin a while back and i just can't i just can't do it anymore and it was too is just like totally once you go it. black you can't never go back Thurbleton. <laughs> I just want enough points so I can get the FDS, and then I'll probably be d- probably be done. Nice. What are you up to this week, Thurbs? We have, we have um, to get moving. So it's Thurbleton. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little hurt that you know all you giant bomb like you know veterans. No one's repping Team Brad. What? Why? What? what that was going to be time? the name of my my alt guild. Not alt the, guild. I, I, he just did guild. another Dude, another pillar. That did in not the team seem Brad hard. Is. That did not seem hard when he. Maybe he's yeah. just awesome at the game, but. Doom I, think, was I, not, think, I think just hard. the tenacity to keep going with it, just because I mean, he didn't yeah. have the save to fall back on all the time. But. That's true. I, it was a five-hour stream, so yes. it was definitely a thing. But I, I don't know. That, I, I think there was one... The, the real Team Brad moment is when he fails repeatedly and then succeeds, <laughs> yes, as opposed to just kind of getting his way through. Uh, so. brute, brute force. Brute force. Um, <laughs> Brad force. No, but... No. <laughs> Brad, no. Brad force. No. Okay, sorry, now I'm going to walk away from this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but what I've been up to, um, I've, I've actually been, it, it's a very old game and all that, but Minecraft, um, uh, I'm like, oh, admin on another right. server and we're just, we're getting ready for another transition. What does that uh, mean? I've been also pl- uh, we're changing maps. Just Tell me about fresh. Minecraft PvP and why does it exist? Please it's bad. Please apologize for gaming. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. It's, it's JavaScript. It's a terrible game. I just don't know why I like playing it. 
Um, but I have been playing Torchlight too. It's because you're a man. Hey, how do you oh, like Torchlight Two? <laughs> um, I really enjoy it. I haven't. Uh, I never played Torchlight One though. I did get it with the uh, bundle, the humble indie bundle. Right. Uh, so I will try that later. But I just, I like it. It's fun. I'm an engineer. I smash things with a giant wrench. So I, so playing Diablo Three uh, and then Guild Wars Two kind of yeah. beat that kind of game out of me. I don't feel any like it's twenty the road is need. To play, even Borderlands, like, I just have no feeling. I have no need to play Borderlands. Um, I feel like I, Borderlands I, is different I, enough, though. Like I'm, I'm enjoying the little I've gotten to play of it. There's so guns in Borderlands. Like, well, I mean, just the, the gameplay feels different enough. I mean, I, I guess there are yeah. only down to it is a shooter and not. Yeah, it's a an FPS. Yeah, yeah. Like that. That's that's enough of a difference for me that I'm I'm actually having fun with it. But the art style is enough a difference between Torchlight and Guild Wars, so I can just like, oh, it's it, I can enjoy the massive blood explosions from when my little dog fights something. <laughs> How do you so? Has it are there any major improvements from Torchlight One to Two? Um, like ap- apart from like the the co op and all that. Um, yeah. No, I mean it's it seems pretty solid. I I haven't played that much of Torchlight One though. I've, right. I want to try. I want to try and get into Dust Force and all that before I tackle Torchlight for the uh, bundle. Man, I'd... I've been sighing a lot today because I've I've I've, <laughs> I've been o- o- kind of like distant from games for the last like week yeah, and a half. Yeah, me and you have been reading books. It's yeah, great. like when you asked like what's the longest time you've been with like it was two. I don't think I've logged in since Monday this week. I haven't logged, logged in, in and since told me they Friday. got rid of the Forge recipes and that your ba bo- your your kind of box was not fixed for you. Yeah, that's pretty much so, it. Like, let's let's start our room. own reading club podcast. I know, like, right? Old ladies. Because I've around. been listening to um, there's a there's an amazing podcast called uh, Writing Excuses, which is hosted by my my favorite current favorite um, author of all time, Brandon Sanderson, and some other authors. Because it's, it's pretty much just a podcast about um, how to write novels, oh, but it's it's incredibly boring. interesting. Even though I, I don't think I'll be writing a novel till I'm like old and decrepit, um, <laughs> I I very <laughs> much senile. <laughs> Yeah, and you write your <laughs> Avengers that you never really had. Yeah, exactly. And, and Diaries of the Self Confessed Cynic. But it's just like the tales of to the Self Confessed <laughs> Cynic in Australia <laughs> fighting giant spiders. <laughs> <laughs> I'd read that. I don't normally read books, but I'd read that. Um, yeah, Wait, Cynic's going to become Decker like, Kane. I, I, that's a plug I have for anyone out there. Yes. Writing excuses. They're fifteen-minute episodes, but there's. Like two hundred of them now because they've been. Like, what what kind of books have you been reading? Um, but they're really good. Just fifty minutes at a time, and and they're all like really interesting topics, like um, something as simple as like how to get published and stuff like that. But also more interesting topics, like um, well, I find it interesting, like the 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 limited third person perspective and how to like implement that properly, or how to write a compelling um a love scene, for example. They're really interesting topics. Um, anyway, what what have you been reading? According to Goodreads, you've been reading. All of the these Lost Fleet. terrible fucking fans. Oh. F- finished Lost Fleet. Uh, finished the Dirty Streets of Heaven. I think it was called. He's caught up I, on Naruto and Bleach. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, I should you don't read that I'm caught up on Naruto and Bleach. High five. Why? Wait. No. Oh, don't. oh. Okay. No, we really need to move on. But, but. I, I what, highly recommend what the fuck's everyone Bleach reads. Now? What the fuck is happening in Bleach? I, I, I stopped with Bleach. the anime. Okay, let's... Which was, well, the anime stopped because I, I feel they like were we tired of our making podcast, filler arcs. But yeah, but what's what's happening in the... Like, he's got his powers back, and then what? Got, no, we should read really back. Don't There's read a, Bleach. We no. should probably move on. No. We're probably annoying so many people right now. No. Right, Quincy's have no. reappeared, and they have attacked Stop the Soul Society it. and stolen the, ban- the Bankais of half the captains. Whoa. Well, why? The Quincy's were good. Well, they, no, they weren't. They were also fighting that, the Soul Reapers. That's just a dude the with the glasses. Soul wipe them out. <sighs> I, don't, I don't know if that's, that's even remotely interesting enough for me to tune back into. No, it's yet. not. The, it's Bleach. Bleach the captain is awful. finally just... used his, actual, his, finally used his sword in a get fight, and that thing seems ridiculous. Wait, the... The, um, the old guy. The old guy. Old bald guy with the scars on his head. He's used that before. He's used his sword before. But he's used, like, actually, he's used other than it just being on fire and him swinging it. Oh, j- just other than the base function of his sword, <laughs> right? Yeah, like where he takes off his powerful. shirt and then he wait. Has he shown his bankai? No, uh, I think so. I think he's shown his bankai. Because the only that guy bankai... can't take his bankai, as far as I think of. 
the only bunker I'm interested in seeing is um, there's the captain that's like the that's modeled after like the um, classical wayward swordsman, the one with like the, the straw hat and stuff. He showed his. We've already seen that. Yeah, he he's shown it. that a long time ago. You know, he, he he's, well up, up until the uh, when Ichigo got his powers back, he hadn't shown it yet. Yeah, he but showed after it before that, then. Nope. No, he didn't. Yeah. yeah, he has. He has. I, I, I don't want to talk about this, not. but I know I can confirm <laughs> that he has. I have I, to go to the Bleach Wiki to f- show you this. Oh God! All right, now <laughs> we're moving on. We're moving, but I, no, I'm interested in I, that. Link everyone, it to everyone, everyone, read. I, but, I bought um, a forty-five dollar ebook, which I really regret, but I, I highly recommend everyone. <laughs> no, else I think we are like thirty mi- or forty minutes now. We need to oh. get moving. All right, so. Yeah. So you guys started um, talking about fucking Bleach. I just tuned you guys out. <laughs> the Park Chung-hee era, Are the transformation Bleach, of talking? South Korea by um, Byung-Koo Kim. Read that news! Book. It's new Barama. Do you want to see the news this week? At least what it is. There's a patch. Thank you. Um, that's, that, that's, that's, the re- that's the repo which is. Uh, the, so reading it has finally <laughs> released what is equivalent to a major patch to Guild Wars 2 as opposed to like the, the standard content updates and stuff they've been doing over the past, this first month. And it's been like a month since Guild Wars 2 came out, by the way, guys. Wow. Hey. Yay. Et cetera, that et cetera. time flew. I only put 450 hours into this game. Jesus oh, Christ. God. It's more than that. 450? It, is, it is more than that. It was 450, like a, it was 450 like a week ago. Oh my I god! Can't wait till the intervention podcast for Riffin. It's like you need to stop this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm st- I'm still sitting here like 220. Like I I have nowhere near. I haven't like, doubling. I haven't broken 100 yet. That's crazy. Anyway, so um, after a month, there I think they're cooling down to a more regulated patch um rollout. Or at least it seems that way. And, and so one of the ma- first major patches was released this week, uh, a couple days ago. And it's relatively disinteresting. Uh, that that that's that's pretty much the long and short of it. Most most of the stuff on there is just bug fixes as expected. Um, there haven't been any significant changes to the classes or balancing, uh, which is what I'm really looking forward to. But none of that seems to be in there. Um, there's a, oh, there's a good. couple of like story missions that have been fixed, and I supposedly a bunch of fixes for map completion stuff. So like uh, skill quests and stuff that have been put out there as well, but. I, 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 would, I would actually, I would, I would hesitate calling this a major patch. I would say that this is a, there are a lot of fixes in this patch, um, but typically a like a, a major patch usually comes along with some either like content, like, new, like yeah, like generally some kind of content or something like. Oh, any that's new... kind of the difference in um, how Arena approaches patches as opposed to other companies. Like, I guess, I guess you can use the term major patch in that way and, and talking about stuff like what Blizzard does with, with 4.0 and so on and so forth, but um, or whatever they're up to now, 6.0. Um, well, it's, it's, it's more so like what MMOs tend to do on what is con- kind of considered the, the 45-day patch, which is going to yeah. be just after the first month and now all the players that are going to play it are still playing, and this is where we'll give you the next bit of content. Wow, wait, so is that, is that a thing that they do? The... Didn't they say the live team that like would be constantly adding new events? They like they weren't going to say what zones they were updating. Uh, I think they said that. Yes. Like so, like you just have to go out into the world and, and discover for yourself like, yeah. what changes have been made to the world around you. So just check the wiki. Yeah, just check the wiki. Um, <laughs> and the and Reddit because obviously yeah, yeah, Reddit. We we got a really good Reddit for this game. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah. So. I, I, yes, other companies I, apparently do do a lot, like associate content updates um, to major balance changes and major bug fixes. But if you look back back at Guild Wars One, they pretty much had a monthly patch kind of thing, which did a lot of balance changes and like the kind of like aggregated stuff they've been doing over the first month. So changes to the auction house, so, sorry, trading post, um, patch patches, sorry, bug fixes and small um, class updates. They usually do that in, in, every month as, as a specific patch. And that's what I mean by major patch. Right? Even though they don't really number them, um, this is the first thing I see that's even remotely equivalent to what I saw back in the first Guild Wars um, on a monthly basis. That's the way they've listed it out, the way they're communicating it. That, that, it kind of brings back like what that used to be like, which is why I call it that way. But um, I don't know. But, so the general thing is here... Nothing spe- spectacular has been changed, except for maybe two things. Um, Revan, do you want to? Uh, we, we, I think you're the only one of you ever found stuff particularly interesting on this. So, what, what are the two? I think two things you found that you wanted to talk about. 
uh, the dungeon changes, they've made it so that, you do, for first off, you don't get your tokens from the chests over the course of the dungeon. You get them at the end of the dungeon. You get all 60 if it's the first time you've run that dungeon that day, or that path that day, at the end of the run. So, just to break that down, um, so one of the things I've done here, especially if you talked about it last week and the week before, because they're kind of like just discovering this now, apparently, or just like going through the discovery process of where they want this to be. But essentially, in dungeons, specifically talking about explorable mode dungeons, which a lot of you out there have probably at least had a look at by now, um, how they used to work is when you're walking through, going through an explorable mode dungeon, there's three pods, there's usually one shared major boss at the start, and then each path diverts. Um, at, after this, the first boss, which is the same for everything, you get one box, which usually gives you five tokens or a small percentage of tokens, like a, a what would it be about a fifth of the tokens you'd usually get from that dungeon. Um, then you have the second boss, which would give you more tokens, and then the last um, final objective, which would give you the largest amount, like a, probably about half of the tokens usually in that dungeon. But that's scrapped now. So what, so what people used to do though especially as some of the exploring modes are pretty difficult, is that they used to farm either the first boss or the first two bosses. So they just get those that first half of the tokens and then quit out, go back in and do that again, just like straight up speed run style, um, which, was, which was good, I guess, in, in inverted commas, for, for people who wanted to gain tokens quickly and to some extent XP quickly, but even though you don't, wouldn't really. Like, is there anything else you really get from that kind of process, Revan? Like, mainly for tokens, right? Uh. Yeah, I was going to talk and you could sort of do easier runs, like right. um, a few and weeks. Shorter runs. I mean, a few, a shorter runs. Shorter runs. Like last week, um, the butcher path for Honor of the Waves was broken, so that was and that was the quickest path, right? Hands down, the quickest path of that dungeon. So what I would just do is just run those first two bosses and wouldn't even go to the boss room because there'd be no point to just go in there and see that the boss hadn't spawned and then fall through the floor when you try and walk in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think that's what people used to do. But now they've been pretty much entirely scrapped that. Um, so yeah, and also people used to like, you could kill the first two bosses in a raw and the t- on one path, and the total amount of enemies you would kill would maybe be five. Wow, inclu- including the bosses. That's that's kind of crazy. But yeah, again, doesn't really matter anymore because you can't do this anymore. Now you actually have to finish the entire dungeon to get the token rewards. Um, do you, are there still chests halfway, like partway through, with like items? Yeah, there's still it? chests. They just, and yeah, they, yeah. they only give you the items. Okay, so you, you, st- you still get some rewards for doing partial dungeon completions. For example, if you wipe too many times on Ascalon Catacombs, you'll still get something for getting as far as you got through. Um, but assuming you can beat the Ranger boss. But um, now for the actual tokens, which is what you want for stuff like uh, the rune sets, which are associated with each dungeon, and the unique skins for endgame gear for each dungeon. Um, that which is what you'd be spending the tokens on, and, and like small stuff like goes to hero potions and stuff like that. And but stats um, for some of those gears, because I just found out that the two of those dungeons have power, toughness, vitality gear. Yeah, so I'll just be running those. Essentially, maxed gear, uh, but bought with tokens, and that, that's what kind of you're going for. But before, what you used to get is thirty tokens for the first time through for the full completion of the dungeon, so cumulative from the first two bosses and the final completion, um, and that would be about a tenth of what you need for a single piece of armor um and that would depreciate with time so it'd be 30 the first time a day i think then 20 every time after that in a day um and also yeah the obvious like issues as i said before which was just like huge amounts of silver along with that so some dungeons were far more efficient to run with than others stuff like that right um but now they've kind of shifted it the focus of com- dungeon completion just to the tokens like in my from my perspective now you'd be doing these completions pretty much primarily for the tokens associated with because you get so many tokens now so for the first time you complete a path of a dungeon per day you get 60 tokens um which is again double what we used to get and that would be one path so if you do as they state in the patch notes three paths in the dungeon in a day uh you get 180 or you're supposed to get 180 tokens is is that right Revan? yeah but that diminishing return system still isn't working properly or at least (laughs) it wasn't the first day Right. Because I got 60 tokens for one path and then 45 for another. Man. Luckily, I didn't need all 60. Right. But still. But it, it was so, still, yeah. Uh, do you have any confirmation as, as to whether that issue is still in effect or? 
there are still posts about it on the official forums and Arena Internet has said they are looking into it and it should not be working like that. Right. Well, yeah, they 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 say that. Although I have seen some like very dickish posts by some of the people working at Arena Net, dude, about saying just going, it's yeah, it's no, it's working properly. That's supposed <sighs> to happen. Like, no, don't. We'll get we'll get there. I I, I want to talk about Arena Net support for this game in a little bit, but um, so yeah, aside from weird stuff with like loot scaling, what you're supposed to be getting from dungeons and what they've posted as part of the patch notes, so I guess this is their intended outcome, is to get a maximum of 180 tokens easily per day for, for doing three paths of a, of a three path dungeon. Obviously, um, well how it works is you get 20 tokens no matter what. So anytime you have to finish you finish that dungeon after the first time on that path per day you always get 20 tokens but you get a bonus of 40 tokens when you finish it the first time on this particular day so that's how it's kind of working 20 tokens for any po- any time after that but generally 60 tokens in the first time through um which means you can pretty much get a piece of armor almost one piece of armor a day which is kind of crazy like have, is that, that's pretty much accurate because you're looking at what 300 for a chest piece or so so that's essentially um, half done in one day's work as three paths in the explorer mode dungeon. What, what do you guys feel about that? Like this, these are usually, these are pretty much the end game, some of the rarest loot or gear skins in the game. But now you can kind of get a full set in a week. Durin, I, I I guess I could see why that could maybe be a problem because you are basically able to get exactly what you want pretty quickly. Right. But at the same time, I mean, we are talking about cosmetic gear as opposed to, like, progression gear that you tend to see in other, other MMOs. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, them allowing you to look exactly the way you want to look pretty quickly isn't necessarily terrible. And there's so many other things in this game at the end game or, you know, quote unquote end game to do. Um, and, and, I mean, PvE never has been the central focus of the end game of, of Guild Wars 2. So, But is like, is is that... An excuse, like for my my main issue with it, even though I, I don't really give a shit because I don't, fuck PVE, but um, but to defend people who actually give a shit, um, so when we first looked at Guild Wars two from the preview, like from from the beta weekends and stuff, for example, when we found those vendors in Lion's Arch who show you the end game armors from the dungeons, um, our major reaction was, hey, those look pretty cool, but there's probably a bunch of other stuff we haven't seen yet, like a bunch of like armors and skins and stuff in PVE. Mm-hmm. They can gain by other methods, like for example, Mystic Forge, um, that we haven't seen yet. Um, and that was that was that was pretty much how we rationalized. Hey, there's these eight sets of armor that look pretty cool, but there's probably other stuff. And therefore, for people who are interested in PVE for the cosmetic progression, which is which is, um, let's be certain that there is no like statistical progression at end game for Guild Wars Two. But that is because ArenaNet stated that their intention was to make it a cosmetic progression. That, that's the idea behind progression in end game for Guild Wars Two, right? And part of that is having a lot of customizability or options uh, to aim for and to make those things somewhat difficult to reach. Like before where I, we were doing the math, it would, it would take like 30 runs of a dungeon to get a full set of, no, it was even more like 50 runs of a dungeon to get a full set of dungeon gear. That sounded like, Hey, that's a significant investment of, which you'd have to like really earn and put time it, into. It was, to get. But, but also at the same time, like that was, I mean, one of our biggest complaints when we were, doing those numbers was this this is this that's feels like a this feels like a free to play MMO grind and that's right. that's not fun. So I mean I think they they may, they maybe went know. a little bit too far with with making it so easy to get but right. I mean it's basically I, I feel like it's it's either either you, you kind of play this balancing game of how many tokens do we give them how how quickly can we you know do we allow them to get these pieces or whatever or you go the kind of I, I personally feel like worst route of make each piece, you know, require X number of tokens, maybe the amount that they have now, but then maybe make it, you know, that you get a random, uh, oh, God. or a random, like, mm. you know, God forbid stat set out of uh, it or something. Yeah. That's again, to create that <laughs> the grind. Worst of all worlds. Like either, either, you're, either you're grinding easy? a bunch in order to get the, the points or you're grinding a bunch in order to get the right exact piece that you want. So like, Fuck neither that. of those sound like fun, so I think no. the the route that they no man, is still it's not supposed to route. be fun. It's they're decreasing the prestige of earning these earning these pieces of armor, and, and that's uh, that is actually yeah, kind that's of what the it's argument. about. Let's that be is, honest, that is actually kind of the argument because what 
All right. So obviously there's legendary weapons. That's something to aim for as a PVE loot guy, right? Yeah, but, that's, that's where you're. And there's the rumors from. of legendary armors, but entirely unconfirmed. Um, but aside from that, like, straight, they what are they aiming for? Legendary armors. Like, what are, What are they aiming for now? Like, what is a well, guy after a week of effort who's gotten a full on of the wave set because that's pretty cool going to do now? Nothing. I, I guess adults. I would say that that hopefully you know those hopefully there are now. <laughs> hopefully there are legendary um, armor pieces because that would again like right now it was knowing that there are legendary weapons like that's where the prestige comes from is right. in in doing that and, and that does take quite a bit of effort in order to get yourself that legendary weapon so like hopefully that's the case for armors as well and that's what people will kind of strive for and that's where you'll see kind of the top PVE um, players wearing mm-hmm. um, if that's not the case. Then I guess I just really hope that ArenaNet has some new content to put out pretty soon. Yeah. Otherwise, that's, they're going to run into kind of that same problem that every MO seems to run into, and that is that players just blow through their PVE gear or PVE content way too quickly and are suddenly yeah. left with nothing to do. No, absolutely nothing. Well, Revan, what what are your thoughts on this? Because you pretty much want a on of the wave set. Is that accurate? Or uh, I mean, well, I thought he I thought he got it. I got what I needed out of Honor of the Waves. I'm okay. actually thinking about changing those boots. To the, uh, <laughs> actually, I, I do want to congratulate you and Shinboy on completing your blood pack. Yep, no more cat, uh, Catechism Manor. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> actually, no, we might have to break that because we don't know what the hobby Dungeon Explorer is because that is the achievement that is after getting uh, all of the pats in every dungeon. So if that is get all of the points of interest in all of the dungeon, we're going to have to go back in there to get that. Oh, man. Well, I want to do those eventually because I, I want to do all the paths. But anyway, so, yeah. So what do you feel? Because you kind matter. of, you've pretty much gotten to where you wanted to be in terms of what you lo- your character looks like and what endgame armor you've gotten for him, right? Uh, pretty much. I, I kind of want a new chest and maybe a new t- a different skin for the boots. Right. But other so than that, I'm good. Do you, my, guy, my heavy armor guy looks like he's wearing medium armor. Yay. So my, my main question would be, like, are you happy with the amount of time you've spent to get that? Or do you think, do you see yourself being bored from here on out because you've kind of achieved what you're aiming for? No, because I can still run those to get gear for my Mesmer so that hey, he has yeah. all of that gear when right. he's uh, Right, guys, you can 80. make more than one characters, apparently. I didn't know that. That's true. I, I actually saw this post as sort of like a different approach sort of thing. Like they were sort of trying to incentivize doing the other paths. Because what it was right. like right now, it's like everyone knows nowadays, mag you can do in a Citadel of Flame. You can do yeah. that in like 30 minutes. Right. No, but it was I've 20 minutes. I've never actually done 20 minutes. even faster. Ooh. I've never actually yeah. done the other two paths because nobody wants to do them. Yeah. I, I, I definitely agree. Yeah. That's a that's a huge benefit for this because because saying that you need to do well, the most efficient thing to do is all three paths in a day. That's awesome because that's encouraging people to do more than one path, as you say. Um, yeah, well, like trying to like stop people from doing all these climbing and jumps to get through like paths quicker and like that. I don't think was the right path to do it. So they sort of made a carrot on the stick. Hey, you did this one. Let's do this other path too now. Yeah, and I I think that's definitely a good thing. Um, but what what do you feel about this the, the, in terms of the potentially unintended secondary effect of making these inverted commas end game armors so easy to get? Well, it, I mean, like, yes, it does make them easy, but I mean, there's still plenty of dungeons that are very hard. I don't see anybody running Crucible of Eternity. A raw is still, I mean, like, I, I don't know how it doesn't seem that active for our guild, right? Um, other than the story, not so legit. The one dude who was so running that explorable. We did has not logged on since he got that gear. Yeah. Man. Um, but, so it's, it like, there's still lots of dungeon content to do. It's just, like, you're doing it more for the difficulty and less for the cosmetic. S- and a lot of people were complaining about, like, medium armor, for example. Right. Everyone has that pirate hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so it's like, well, we need to get people to, like, at least, you know, start getting this some diversity at high levels. And I've I've thought I've heard talk about like they have more dungeons planned. They do have more dungeons planned, which obviously means more dungeon sets, which is cool. Um, and I I hope they start seeding more um, armor types and stuff into the game very yeah. quickly. There are there are skins in world view on a world structured PvP that I have yet to see in PVE, but only a couple, like only. I'm- 
I, I can name like, or I can remember like five or six that I've seen. Yeah. Not too many. The entire line of packed weapons I have not seen in PVE, and I've been trying to find out where they are. Yeah, yeah. I'm still waiting for them to release more like you know outfits in the gem store because I like I would want to get more town clothes and all that, but they haven't released any. That's true. I, I like you look like a dapper little sea monster. So no. yeah, in, in general, I I'm gonna stay here. I was episode 22 that I do, I do have a worry about end game content for the people who really want. The people whose armor is very important to them in terms of like what they aim for in video games. Like for example, Duran, just just to just to polish this topic off, um, that that's a bit sexual, isn't it? Anyway, um, is armor Whoa. is end game armor a thing in what in WoW? Like, is that what people heard sexual. Is that part of what people that's aim funny. for? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that it's in that's what that's what rating that's is entirely all built what around. they go for. Yeah, that's what okay. the end game is built around. Is it is the end game? You do the raids to get that gear to look, you know, the best. Like you have that gear running around, and people know if you have this set of gear, you have completed the hardest raiding content out there. So that's that is like literally a case where people are spending hundreds of hours to get a end game piece of gear, yes. like end game armor, to look a specific way. Um, so what what do you feel about the lack of that? I, I can't see any of that in Guild Wars Two at the moment. Yeah, it's it's like I said, it's weird because like. The way they had it before felt too much like a free to play MMO grind. Yeah. But the way they have it now, like you said, like you, you can get every piece that you want in like a week. Yeah. It was just, it's um, just like kind of like back to their discussion of um, when they made the skill lit, like the skill pool, uh, that they transitioned it from a pool of um, all the options to the new, the, the tiered system they're using now. Um, that, that was kind of the thing. Like they wanted to have people walk through the skills and have a progression there or a feeling of progression. Um, at the moment, you kind of, especially for endgame armor, like at least how I progressed, I, I, I point out to me if you guys do anything different, but you kind of move through your crafted armor sets and then you get your endgame armor and that's it. That, that, I can't see any like endgame like the only reason I would of, see The only reason I would see switching from it once you've gotten your endgame armor is if you get tired of how your character looks. Yeah, and you'll go and grind out a different set of armor, or maybe, maybe like like um, Riven said, like maybe a different set of boots because you don't like the ones you have. Like, yeah, I guess you'll do yeah, that. There, there's there's a couple armor sets I'd like to get. Like I, right now, I'm going for more like the the invader set and a mix between that and a few dungeon things. But right. I would love to get some of the cultural armor. I just don't have like 300 gold, <laughs> and I won't well, for a long time. So I, I guess the question I have for you though, Cynic, then is as somebody who came from Guild Wars One, I imagine yep. this idea of cosmetic in-game gear was in that game as well, right? Yeah. So Guild Wars One, they had um, the elite gear set which was the Kurzik and so like every, every type of gear set had an elite version and um the hard the difficult for, thing for me there is finding a comparative value in both time and in-game currency because currency has changed so much between the two games but i can say that for my elite Kurzik armor especially since i'm a person who i'm not very efficient in my gathering gold and stuff but it took me about 45 maybe hours to get my end game jesus uh, gear noob how much did it take how long did it take you well lucky for me i do uh where's it i did a lot of speed clears in kurzik areas for kurzik faction right so amber chunks were, came really easy right but i think the hardest armor for me was probably um the yeah probably vabian mm-hmm. how long did that take i never you? i never went for up the what is it called obsidian armor right fabian because it required a bunch of gems yeah and it took me i'd say about 50 hours yeah and, and so these are all because that's it's the second most expensive armor exactly so we, we're talking about like a tier below like the absolute prestige tier which was the stuff you do from these dungeons that only open up at, like under specific conditions um and those that, like on, only a few people in the entire world i would say actually ended up getting obsidian armor and stuff like that. Like those uh, are later on rare. in the game, definitely it's more popular. But at well, yeah. this point, no. we're talking about years down the line. Like first year, I don't think I saw anyone with. Oh yeah, if you saw someone with obsidian, you're like, okay, kind of report that to Arena Net. <laughs> He's clearly <laughs> cheating. <laughs> clearly, you know, yeah. Oh, was, you right. mean like if I ever see someone with a legendary within the first year, I'm automatically going to re- report them, no questions asked. <laughs> no, but legendary. I guess that goes. I don't think legendaries can compare to obsidian, to be honest. I, I, I guess that goes back mm, I to do. kind of what we were talking about before, like with these rumors of legendary armor. Like if that turns out to be true, then that's going to be a thing. I don't, I don't see a problem then. Like at that point, yeah, that but that, again, sense. we're talking about rumors here. So yeah, exactly. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like if that turns out to be true. 
Yeah. There is no problem here. That is that is the end game, you know, highest tier armor to get until they release new stuff or whatever. Um, but but if there isn't, assuming it's not true, like there definitely does seem to be a problem with getting that stuff too early, especially in a time right now where there are a lot of people out on the internet saying Guild Wars Two has no end game. This game's terrible. You know, right. it's it's yeah. I don't know. No like as, as a primarily a PvP like, player, I don't really care about PvE end game. Fuck, such a such a weirdo. All right. So, <laughs> uh, that, that, was, that was one news topic. I, I guess we can kind of summarize by saying, hey, it's interesting that they're dissuading people from doing one dungeon over and over again. And definitely encouraging people to try different dungeon types. But in general, it's a very interesting move on Arena's part, um, changing the rewards for dungeons as they did. I, I, I think, I think in general, the change is a positive. Worth of the armor. Uh, yeah. The only real like negative we can see is that is that change to the worth of the um the the dungeon armors. But in general, for people who don't have much time in their hands, this is awesome. This is a fantastic difference. Like I I don't even see myself being able to do three dungeon runs a night. So for me, it's gonna take like a month if I wanted to that if you wanted a full set of um end game dungeon armor myself. And I think that's kind of the audience they're aiming for. It's just that those <laughs> those couple of like extreme cases who do want things that give take them hundreds of hours to get that we're kind of worried about. Anyway, that is. Was there any other changes you want to talk about, um, Revan? I th- that was one of them. Oh, I want yeah. to talk about how they fixed the Berserker's chests. Again. Do you want to talk about Cynic? F- Berserker's fixed what? Chest? The, the Berserker's, Berserker's chest? Yeah. <sighs> well, my we'll, talk, we'll talk about it later. They, well, they well, scaled up the armor for Ascalonian Catacombs and Codicus's Manor to be <laughs> level, 80, level 80 instead of 60 and 70. I think that's an interesting move, but one they didn't have to do. Um, because, because okay, so so we, we were talking about the, uh, the the same stuff we were talking about before. So dungeon reward armors. Uh, so you get the tokens you spend on armor at the unique token vendors at the at Lion's Arch, and you get your armor sets from them. But for Ascon Catacombs and Corticus Man- Mansion, I think it was the first two dungeons of the game, the armor the vendors give you for that significant amount of effort was not maxed. It was level 60 for Ascon Catacombs, level 70 for Corticus and Manor. And people... I'm not sure if there was a huge outcry for this, because the armors themselves didn't convey particularly... Like, they're maxed stats, but I think they were both... So- like, not soldiers, it was... Um, the equivalent of soldiers in the PVL, so power, toughness, vitality. I think that was that was uh, cata- catacombs was power, toughness, vitality. Yeah, or at least it had a power, toughness, vitality set. Yeah, I don't know about the other dungeon. So, but it was like it's one of the least um, looked for. Like, I know a lot of guardians look for that, but it, for most cases, people are generally looking for berserkers or stuff like that, like power, uh, crit damage, and precision, like that, that kind of stuff is what a lot, a lot of people aim for. Um, Not me. I'm a tanky guardian. Yeah, again, aside from Guardians. <laughs> you're taking Guardian, use your uh, Mace Focus. Ridiculous. Yeah. Really? Fucking ridiculous. 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 It's so underrated. No one shh, no one knows about it. Shh. I go for a pistol awesome. and dagger. Um, Yeah, as a Guardian. Pistol dagger. Yeah. OP. Yep. Um, so, I'm a rifle mesmer. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a change. Oh, you too? I thought I was the only one. It's a change that they did, which is good for the people who are grinding for those specific armor sets, but one I don't see as being a specifically big change. Because in the end, you can just use um, transportation stats to, to give it the actual stats you want, which is generally not the stats that are already on it. Anyway, anything else? I, I, I can't see much else on here. I, I'm, I'm just scrolling through the changes list now. Again, like this doesn't... Without huge profession changes... This patch doesn't seem like a particularly big news, even though it's one of the biggest patches they put out so far. There's generally a bunch one of other thing that goes off like the the subject that we were just talking about with the armor and everything yep. is they did try and improve black line chests, which oh. I know did, which I know those do give uh, fine transmutation stones. But you also have a chance, like the new hot item last week or last time it was the uh, Mystic Forge. Yeah, now it's a permanent black line trader express. With so a cool. Rare, yeah. So oh, rare from the chest. Just just to to outline for others, for people who don't know or don't remember, um, so black line tra- black line chests are things you get as drops in PVE and rewards for your um personal story. They're open with black line keys, uh, which are f- mm-hmm. which do have a chance to drop apparently, but are very They're very really very low. Rare. Yeah, yeah, incredibly you can always rare. Just keep making characters up until like level fifteen. Yeah, where they and give you, get you a one, key, one key from doing a character up to level fifteen. So yeah, that's an option. Um. Alternatively, you can five obviously. Minutes. <laughs> it's account wide, so I don't know. But alternatively, you can um, 
just buy well inverted commas just buy a key from the black lightning training post for 150 gems i think it's 125 gems something like that um in in general around a gold i think it would be or a gold and a half for a single key um and obviously especially if you get a bunch of black lightning training like black lightning chests from your personal story i think i think i've got like 50 from just finishing the the story no finishing all the areas I i haven't even touched the story after level 56 and i still have like 50 black lying chests um and just having those sitting around most people have not been investing in the keys for obvious reasons considering their price to open those chests because usually what you get out of them are transportation stones maybe if you're lucky like durin the bastard um black lion salvage <laughs> kits but generally you get like black lion um what's his face uh gathering tools which are essentially useless because they're not really i don't think they're any better than all calcum stuff um no, yeah, they're, they're worse than oracalcum shit if i'm not mistaken no, yeah wait, no, no, they're, no, they're, they're max no sorry sorry that's masters that's masters that is worse than oracalcum yeah I mean, it's 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 because they've ruined oracalcum we, we found a node we took ages to get to that node and it ruined the that oracalcum chunks fucking hate it anyway um but yeah you get those and you get tonics which can do pretty hilarious stuff like transform you into a codan for a specific amount of time um yeah but, but you can get those from dungeons you can buy them using tokens and i yeah. got a per- an infinite use uh potion from one of those mystic chests and i don't care anymore i turn into a earth elemental whenever i feel <laughs> like it so yeah i like, can't the you, you get animation that kind of for that earth elemental is great because there's no animation I so, walk on water. You, you get that kind of stuff, which is generally kind of cool, I guess. But obviously, their intention is for these items to be significantly more valued than that. So people buy Jack Lion keys. Like, that's the general thing. They want people to use real money to buy Black Lion keys. So what they've started doing is, or, is um, introducing new things to the, the random, gener- random number generated pool of possible results from Black Lion chest. And the newest one, as Thurbleton pointed out, was specifically a really cool one that I want myself. Um... A ve- like a, a permanent use or infinite use vendor that does, it spawns like a dude who you can talk to to access the black line trading post pickup, and that's cool. That is yeah. that is pretty uh, cool. I was, I was on the forums. Yeah, there keys. were two things. <laughs> yeah, see, people people were complaining that now they're gonna have to buy keys, and <laughs> they're also complaining. Well, because there was a story. I don't. I think it might have been on Reddit. I don't remember where, but some guy spent like five hundred dollars yeah. trying to get keys. Yep. Yep. And gotten didn't get the thing he wanted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and people were complaining like, uh, "Well, you got that like temporary banker for buying the collector's edition, right?" Yeah, or not collector's. Yep. You get people were saying character. like they feel like they got gypped because that was temporary, and now they're adding these permanent things. Yeah, like straight up. I I like I like the idea of adding these permanents to the <laughs> game, but the fact that you can't. I believe there are um, account bound from these chests. Are, are they? I'm pretty sure they are. I'm pretty sure I they every, are. I think everything those chests I would imagine so, yeah. Yeah. So the fact that you can't trade them, there's no way for people to get them in any other way than RNG is annoying to me. Like, for example, I love the whole Mystic um, the mystic Conduit thing, which allows you to access the Mystic Forge from anywhere, because it's literally <laughs> a result of um, crafting or trading parts on the um, trading post. In fact, you can sell your Mystic or buy Mystic Conduits at any time now. But these Black Lion guys can't be. Um, I understand they want people to spend real money on those keys, but it was something as cool or as useful in Vertical Commons as a permanent um, permanent vendor, for example. Um, I would prefer them to put that up for a specific gem count. Like if it was there for like, I, I don't know, like 2,000 gems, you get this thing. You can buy it straight off. No RNG bullshit. You can buy a, a permanent Black Lion guy. I'd do that. I, I, I'd consider that at least. Um but have it fully fully RNG based. I, I don't know how I feel. Duran, what what are your thoughts here? I, the problem with doing something like that from arena net standpoint is at that point you are no longer spending money with them anymore. Like mm-hmm. by doing it the way that they do and having the random number generator there, like it works in 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 their favor because they're able to continue getting money from you as you keep buying these keys, hoping for the item you're trying to get. Um, <laughs> I mean. Uh, like the, the scenario you're you're doing is kind of similar to the whole uh, lifetime subscription for an MMO uh, thing. Like they get right. the, the big amount of money up front and then nothing else from you after that. And right. generally, that method is used when they don't think their their system is going to work. But isn't that for example? I like the I actually 
continuously not buy with real money which is a kind of the, the point but I, I buy with in-game gold because i don't really need them too often but the black lion um salvage kits which have a really huge chance of getting awesome shit from um gold 50% items chance yeah it's percent huge. chance to get ectos and 100 percent chance to pull the rune out damn straight um they're fucking awesome and it, it's crazy because the numbers on that were off at um upon like the game release and i actually tested it through um salvaging stuff of the training post for ectos and i posted my results and people didn't believe me for a while but yes it has because it's literally said it's said on there the wrong number but um yeah it has yeah a, a huge chance of giving you ectos from from gold level 80 golds and and always gives you the the um the component inside it so sigils or runes um so i i, I love those like i, I love black lion and um salvage oh, kits. great and i and i would I, I actually did consider it for a significant period of time until i had I realized i had enough of gold for one to buy that like just straight up because if you for example have end game armor you really want the ability to retain your runes from it especially if you're using runes you want like for example pirates runes or um, nobles runes if you if you're lucky enough to get a full set of those or um, I can, and, and I, I could see like doing that with with things like those um salvage kits i could see yeah. being able to just buy but, so those the point with, i was kind of bringing up with the salvage kits is that works for them because it's a continuous form income because there's uses on it it's 50 uses or no it's 25 uses right I wouldn't mind that? there being a huge, hugely expensive permanent, uh, sorry, Invoicom is permanent back lion guy, which had uses on him. For example, 25 uses. But wait, it, it was, you're talking permanent though. That's the thing. Like you wouldn't uh, mind that no, as no, a No, no, sorry. A, use, a, a uses dependent black lion guy. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, As opposed to like one time use is what I meant by permanent. But yeah. Uh, well, don't, don't, that. Don't, don't they have something similar to that already on the trading post or trading post uh, the, uh, the store they have a one time use black line guy and it's quite okay, expensive okay. as opposed to a, a multiple use but more expensive yeah, it's, it's, it's a consumable charge sort of thing yeah and it's for five minutes okay. yeah so I, I, again like stuff like that I would love to see but I think we yeah, I mean, can if all it's, agree if it's not permanent then yeah I could totally see that like having a you know a 25 use black lion dude that would be awesome buy that like yeah, I can I can definitely see that, but like I I thought, I thought earlier you were talking about wanting a permanent one, and well, I did. Uh, no but way, you, your point about <laughs> my, my, I did, but your point about um them not getting money from that ever again is a valid one. I I can see why they'd want to limit that in some way, but my my main problem with it is this awesome item is RNG only at the moment, with no way of purchasing something even equivalent, and that's kind of annoying. Um, anyway, aside from that, it, hey, if you want a permanent black lion guy, buy a fuckload of elixir keys. That that's their. That's pretty much the long and short of that part of the, part of the patch notes and news for this week. I, I don't think there's anything else here that we really care about. Experimental, ri- experimental rifles no longer work in world versus world. So fuck you, fucking cheaters. Fuck off. <laughs> Hate you guys. That's still, that's still not <laughs> stopping the cheaters. Hey, did you hear what RuneScape did? Uh, no. What, what did RuneScape do? Basically, uh, d- I didn't actually play RuneScape. I promise. But um. What they did is they take they got all of the botters and basically they made this island in the game where there's like these mock trials where players can go to the island and choose whether or not these botters get banned or not. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's I, like I will, a people's uh, jury. I don't know why you'd ever say no. Just, just yes. Just <laughs> ban if it was a hacked, What if it was a hacked account? Ban. ban. <laughs> No mercy. See, you, Considering see the- you must like my idea for what they should do to these servers that are like cheating really, really badly. What's the idea? Just ban the entire server. I, th- I, th- I think, um, what's his face? Like having them only be able to verse each other would be pretty funny. You mean like what Max Payne did? What, what did Max Payne do? No- Max Payne 3, they put in the cheaters. If you got caught cheating, you, put, you were put in the cheaters pool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and and it's only cheaters be cheaters. <laughs> that's cool. I actually th- kind of think that's pretty funny. You could, I mean, you could petition to get out of there, and you like, I think you could eventually get out of there. But if you did it again, they put just put you back in there. Yeah. and you never got out. That's that's yeah. That's I great. like that. Like, it's servers that fucking cheat. Only verse servers that cheat. I, I'm fine with that. Um, but obviously, optimally, you wouldn't want to be able to cheat. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, I saw one more thing on here that I wanted to talk about. Oh yes, um, removal of the formulas. From the Mystic Forge. Revan, go. Uh, yeah, they removed the formulas to make the Mystic Chest, but not the formulas to make the Conduit, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so the idea is um, 
last week we talked about it, I think it was. Uh, they introduced a bunch of form- new formulas to the Mystic Forge to reduce um, commodity price, so increase commodity prices. So essentially, things that were never bought off the off the off the um, auction house were made essential components to really cool items in the Mystic Forge. We, we could kind of summarize by saying that. Um, and that essentially the, the end gate and potential of that was the Mystic Forge conduit, which allows you to mis- use the Mystic Forge anywhere. Um, that definitely affected the economy the economy of guild wars 2 and it's very interesting actually watching that effect but they their end game their their end goal for that was to raise the price of these specific items especially since they those items themselves were um they're used for crafting which made some crafting pools uh very different to others in terms of net costs and that kind of stuff that there's a lot of ramifications uh for having those low prices what i think has been the issue though, because Revan, you, you kind of looked at those items again recently, right? They don't seem to have changed much. Is that correct? Butter went from at the highest point of those chests being up, I think it was like 15, 16 copper a piece. It is now back down to four copper again. Yeah. Which kind of means they failed, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't think they wanted to change the price. They just wanted to get the amount off of this like out of existence i i think rather than just taking it out of existence they just had to make people spend money and get rid of it in a but i think the, way. them wanting to reduce the total amount of existence was linked to the fact that they wanted the prices to go up though wasn't it because oh, it's obviously demand um related i i think what actually happened was with the mystic forge um recipes put in it definitely raised the prices of what pre-existing materials that those um those parts came from so for example butter let's just use butter as the example so butter went up in price because it's part of the thing to make the mystic forge conduit um and that was the intended thing so not only did that was that a cool effect so some people got mystic forge conduits but obviously people who um were using were mainly cooks uh, we're able to transition to using butter as a purchasable item as opposed to a combo item. That that's kind of the idea behind it. Um, but what happened there was with the prices of the item going up and their drop rates going up as well. Um, because they, obviously as, as they were removed from karma vendors, the arena increased the drop rates to supply to supplant that. Um, I think the amount of people farming or just the amount of people finding those items in the middle of nowhere, um. And then just posting them on the Black Lion Company to get rid of them outpaced how much they wanted the, the how much they wanted to remove from the Black Lion trade post. But I, I think that's actually what happened. So what, what happened was in, in ev- eventually is prices went up as intended with the um, changes to the Mystic Forge and Black Lion um, to the fifteen copper whatever it is, which actually is a pretty decent price. I think that's where Iron is sitting at as well, like thereabouts. Um, so it went up to the 15 copper, but then when they removed that um, that draw on those items, so that they removed the the recipes for the Mystic Forge, um, the amount of the drop rate is and people who found it just randomly, and people who farmed for it inevitably would have eat, like completely superseded that. So now just the price just crashed back down again. I I don't think they quite hit what they wanted to do with those items at all. I think that only affected butter because I think the other ones, or at least I believe bronze and iron ore they might have gone down but they did not go down as hilariously as <laughs> butter did well let's put it this way when they made that change to butter we were doing um it was level 78 dungeon and getting butter as half of our drops <laughs> so yeah maybe the, maybe it's just to do with butter anyway i my main thing here was i was interested to see them removing that um that recipe from the trading from the mystic forge so quickly i was expecting that to be around for quite a while uh, and to wait for everything to balance out but anyway and that's the news for this week wow we spent we spent so long on news and random bullshit this week god damn no, it. i think i think it was just the random bullshit that we spent way too much time on <laughs> maybe maybe um we're like what an hour now what, what are your clocks at i think i think at an hour 10 or an hour 15 uh mine's at like an hour 30 oh I'm an hour god. 40 but i started recording before we yeah, yeah no, I, I think we're actually it. hitting out at 30. Anyway, so finally we can transition to our actually main uh, discussion topic this week, uh, which is an interesting one and might may bleed over, bleed over to ne- next week, considering we'll probably have different guests on. But um, the the idea for this week was one month check in. So Guild Wars Two has been out for a month now, thereabouts, so a couple more days than a month, and so we wanted to go through and um, talk about 
uh, has given us to met expectations for that first month and what do we still think needs work. Um, so essentially, it's just us going around and sounding off on how this month has gone, uh, what we expected from Guild Wars 2 and what's delivered to us, and then, and then just bitching about the various things we think are still quite fucking lacking. So who, who was... Okay, because it's the positive side of this is perhaps one we need to dwell on because obviously we have to be balanced. But it's the more it's the less interesting stuff. Because I can say I'm pretty happy with what Guild Wars 2 has given to me thus far with my 200 hours or so of play. Revan, I assume you're around the same. You goddamn Guild what? Wars 2 apologies. Like, you're happy with you're happy with Guild Wars 2. Has it met expectations for you? I I had really low expectations coming into this just because I didn't know what to expect and I was coming from Star Wars and it blew my expectations out of the war, especially with the minimal amount of downtime Arena Net seems to have with this game. It is crazy. Yeah, there, there was like I, I I can't think of any period longer than about four hours that the game was down for the entire first month of being out. It's kind of crazy. But yeah, like so, so in general, you're relatively happy with it. <laughs> yeah, it's just like some small things in Wav Wav and some oh, we'll maybe get some there. of the dungeon we'll get changes. Durin, yeah. I, 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 I did you see me expectations? What were your expectations going in, and has, has it met expectations for you? Um, honestly, like I, I, I don't know. I don't even really know what my expectations were for the game, um, because like I, I kind of also was coming from from Star Wars as well, and, right, and having played a lot of other MMOs and, and and having played a lot of MMOs post WoW that always disappointed. Um, well, yeah, I guess. Well, Secret World was all right, wasn't it? Secret World was all right. There were, there were definitely some issues, though, um, that, that I noticed with the game as I played more. It, it, it's something I've noticed with a lot of game, a lot of these MMOs where I, um, I'll play in, in like the, you know, the, the pre-order beta or whatever, get hooked in, buy the game, and once you kind of get past that initial first, like, 15 or so levels, you start to kind of see the game unravel. Yeah. Uh, that, and that's happened yeah. in MMO after MMO after MMO. Like, you start to really see the negatives in it. Um, and I have to say that, granted, I haven't hit max level yet, because I, I you know, haven't played for the last week, yep. um, but with Guild Wars 2... You haven't done a raw yet. I, I never hit that point. <laughs> like I'm in, this, okay. I'm in my seventies now. I'm like seventy three right now. And yeah. I never hit that point where I noticed like the the PVE progression unraveling and like starting to notice like oh this is taking forever or I you know th- this this zone sucks or these abilities suck or I'm tired of doing the same thing. Like I know a lot of people have complained about the the combat. You kind of get all of your your tools pretty quickly. That's true. Um, and and so you're kind of doing you. In terms of combat, you kind of are doing the same thing um, for quite a few levels, mm-hmm. but I feel like maybe the playstyle that I chose, being a much more active playstyle and dodgy playstyle, helped kind of keep me engaged in the combat through the whole time. It's kind of interesting um, because um, something I've discovered, well, I did, I started discovering before I took my short hiatus from the game, was that um, with the I, I played warrior and obviously warrior has a lot of options in terms of its first couple of skills because we have the largest weapon selection in the game but that can be stuff for any class like for example as ever maybe necromancer every class has <laughs> a huge amount of variety as to what they can be doing at any given time um for mesmer is like for example just something as simple as mantras seriously change the way they do some of their stuff um and obviously the, the various ways they can use clones and so on and so forth so engineers have the tool belt and so on and so forth anyway um you definitely have a lot of tools at your disposal, pretty much no matter what class you picked. And you definitely get warmed into those tools very quickly. Um, but what I found was, even though I was using, I pretty much settled into two base weapon sets for the warrior. It was um, mace, shield, rifle as one weapon set type. And the other one was um, was an axe, warhorn, sword, shield. Like, those are my two um, sets of weapon sets like, that, I, that I very much enjoyed. Um but even though I, I pretty much had, I played with those for a good 120 of my 200 hours, stuff like learning to use cross profession combos and um, the customizability, as soon as, especially as you start unlocking later game traits and gear, definitely changed the way I played as a go on. Like, especially cross profession, uh, fuck, I can't even talk today, combos. 
Um, he, huge deal. Like using stomp yeah. finishers where I needed to. Um, because Warriors has the most finishes of the game, but very few fields. Like using a leap finisher where I needed to, right timings for stuff like that. Definitely changed the way I looked at group situations, especially coming off my mainly like solo PvP play before, like in the beaters and stuff. Um, there is a lot of depth to Dead Wars 2, but I definitely agree that if you don't get into that like higher level of team play or um, greater familiarity of how your class actually works. For Guardian, for example, you have a lot of combo starters and a lot of combo finishes. So learning things like getting your own, like having your own combos, using your own combos as part of your general play style. Um, if you don't do that, then it is, I can definitely see why it would be a very simplistic game to a lot of people. Yeah, like I, th- I think the best way to sum it up is the, the combat in Guild Wars 2 it's as engaging as you allow it to be. Yeah. There are ways to play this games. game that are very passive and, 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 and don't require a whole lot to do and are very much kind of maybe not real rotations like you have in, in standard MMOs just because of the more actiony combat in general. Yeah. Um, but they're, it's, they're more along those lines where you know you're going to use this ability than that ability, then you're going to switch to your weapon, then you're going to use that ability, and you're going to use that ability. And you're pretty much kind of going to stand still. You might dodge once to do this or whatever. But like it, it's very much just kind of this this monotonous you know constant just keep doing that with every encounter, right? Um, but then there are also builds and also ways of playing the game that are more reactive. It's it's very much more about reading what the enemy is doing and keeping distance between you and the enemy, or just trying to ensure that they don't hit you very often and yeah. lining yourself up to drop this thing and to drop this you know uh, combo field or whatever. Yeah, and lining yourself up to do this finisher. And so, like, I think a lot of the people that complained about the combat feeling very monotonous and like, oh, God, I, you know, I got all this stuff by level 15 and now I'm just using the same shit from 15 to 80. It's so boring. It's like, well, then, you know, maybe try a different weapon set. Try something that is a little Absolutely. bit more, you know, engaging more. Maybe go, you know, if you were doing a ranged a lot and you felt like it was starting to get kind of boring, pick a melee one and try that yeah. out a little bit. Like, for example, I, I just said earlier, I played both of my favorite weapon sets for about, after about 80 hours. So that first 80 hours of play... I was still jumping between different types of weapon sets. I, the, one of the only things I haven't tried is double mace and sword main hand, axe offhand, and sword offhand in general, because pretty shit for warrior, in my opinion. But like, I tried pretty much every other permutation of stuff and I, I used that time to develop my play style and, and figure out how I like to play the game. And for me, it's very reactive. So I, I definitely think, at least from my perspective, that reactive play styles are generally more rewarded by the Guild Wars 2 um, systems. Like, for example, if you yes. um, compare the effects of traits that are passives, so stuff like, um, in the case of the Warrior, uh, there is, I think it's Shrug It Off, which uses the Shout Shake It Off when you have more than two conditions on you, once every 30 seconds, which sounds like a very powerful trait, especially if you if you uh, make uh, Shake It Off remove two conditions instead of one. But that's that's not as good as a lot of the active traits, like the, the traits that reward you from performing an action in any specific given time. Like, for example, um, the, the ones that reduce shout cooldowns, for example. Uh, like straight up, like if you reduce your shout cooldowns and time your shouts better, then you will get far more rewards than that free shout every 30 seconds. There's, there's a, yeah. I think that this is straight up, if, even the pure mathematics of Guild Wars 2, it definitely rewards reactive gameplay more more. Um, involved in active gameplay than passive yeah. gameplay so i can see that i can definitely see people who prefer to play passively being ill-served and somewhat finding it boring as they go through especially if they start seeing less and less rewards from their play style yeah than absolutely the reactive guys yeah i mean i was noticing like you know with the, the play style i was playing like i was able to fairly easily solo like six dudes and in the fight with nearly full health yeah and as opposed and to like that's something um, even the tankiest of guardians out there who who spec pure passive. So, for example, um, Revan's converted to focus offhand. That's even though it's really powerful, it gives you a shitload of block. That's still an active offhand. Like you have to enable the blocks when you think you need to, and you, you have to manage your cooldowns and so on and so forth for that right hand side of your skill bar, um, act, like properly. But if if you, so for example, spec like shield for the toughness bonus, like passive toughness bonus for having your shield out and did stuff like that as a guardian, you'd be far less survivable than Revan would be like just straight mm-hmm. up, even just purely from the game mechanics perspective. And and so he wouldn't, for example, be able to, a passive person wouldn't be able to solo five dudes, whereas an active person would is, what yeah. is kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. Dude, why, are we, what, why are we talking about that again? Oh yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> it, it, in general, <laughs> 
you're kind of happy with how Guild Wars 2 does combat and it kept you engaged. Yeah, yeah. well, it, yeah, like in general, it, I, I'm happy with how, how Guild Wars 2 handled PvE progression um, yeah. from 1 to 80. There were, a lot of people complained that it went too quickly and that it felt like you were gaining levels faster as you got higher than you were at the lower levels. Mm-hmm. But uh, again, uh, coming from somebody who has played a lot of games like WoW, that's refreshing to me that I'm not sitting at level you know 65 for two days just trying to get that that next little tick over to to you know sixty six so that I can eventually get to level ninety, like that's not. It's kind it, of crazy. It's, it's it's rewarding constantly getting those levels because and again, like um, it, I can I think when a bunch of like the top, uh, what was it around fifteen or so people in our guild finally got to level eighty, and, and by top I mean fastest levelers. Um, when we finally got to eighty. I we we started messaging around. Well, I started messaging around to see what people's average time was. Like if you divide your hours played on that character by your level, um, I think pretty much all of us were sitting in the one and a half hours per level to one hour and fifty minutes per level, all the way from like one to right eight where they wanted you to be, exactly where they wanted us to be. It's terrifying. <laughs> How accurate that turned out to be. <laughs> I was just like, how did how do they even? It doesn't even make sense. I didn't do I did random stuff. I did crafting when I felt like it. I did like Wolver when I felt like it. I I did dungeons for a shitload of those hours, which would give you fuck all XP. And then for other other times I just like ground through a bunch of PV. I farmed and shit. And I still hit straight up one hour and fifty minutes or so. And I think it was like one hour and forty two, I think was for me, um, minutes per level. Uh, it, it was crazy. It's just awesome that they and and well, Revan, well especially in a, especially in a game like this because again, like yeah. you do get a lot of your tools early on, so it's not like like WoW where you're kind of looking forward to that next unlocked ability. Yeah, when you're getting that level. Um, so the levels, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, they don't really mean a whole lot, right? But it's it's just kind of that that constant recognition of you know that 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 constant ding of the next level like is very rewarding like that alone yeah. in, in in and of itself is the reward yeah and, and uh, well levels don't mean it a lot i would agree with that it's, except for 80 where you finally get yeah, yeah um your last your ability to trade out like properly so actually have multiples of multiples of five in every trait line uh, that completely mm-hmm. changes how your character will lay out especially with the the combinations of minor traits and major traits once you hit 80 like for example R- revan um, did you expect yourself to be hitting max level as fast as you did? No, uh, no. I thought I would probably not play as much as I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Is but, that a good thing about the game or a bad thing? No, apparently a good thing. It's I a guess. good thing that they like it, they kept me playing, but I didn't expect to be playing as much as I was. Like doing multiple twenty-four hour plays. <laughs> fucking that, crazy yeah that sort of made me wow. chuckle it's like when, when you asked uh riven like did, it, did the game use expectations like i hope so <laughs> <laughs> you played it forever um how do you feel about that do you feel that you were ill served by hitting 80 so quickly or were you pleasantly surprised or uh, I, I don't even know what to think i was just when i hit 80 i was just like all right now what do i do so i just started running dungeons yay i mean I, I i mean i probably wasn't ill served because i I got to run see uh, Citadel Flame before they passed it, so I got some gold out of that. Yeah, that's true. There you go. But uh, Thurbleton, how long did it take you to hit? Because you, you hit 80 uh, quite a bit after the, our crazy people, didn't you? I think it was? Yeah. I, 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 well, I, I, I'm, I'm still crazy. I just didn't do any crafting. <laughs> because I just kept giving all my stuff to Riven and Benny and, and everyone else. <laughs> right. but, so had, do, you, do you remember what hour stamp you were at when you hit 80, or do you not? Um, I think I was just under 200, maybe. And so that um, would be, I, 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 uh, what would that be, hour 45 or so per level? Yeah, I'd wait or so. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. I guess, see, Durin, that's, how crazy is that? Just like straight up. It's, it's like they knew. It's, it's like they knew. It's like they knew. But how, did you feel, um, Therableton, did, did, how do you feel about hitting 80 when you did? And Do you feel like it took you the appropriate amount of time or did you feel ill it anyway? Um, I mean, it did feel like it took longer, but that's just probably because I was working while other people were playing more <laughs> Guild Wars and not sleeping. Yep. Um, like, it, but yeah, it, it I, I did enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it, 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 some, some people could like come down and still like do, we, we were able to do things at the lower level still, like the 80s could come down and like if, if we did a guild event or something, 
that was enjoyable. Right. Um, the, the pacing seemed pretty good though. Still, I, I did enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's that's, that's from, uh, from, don't forget about the eighties like, carrying people into areas they weren't supposed to be in. <laughs> <laughs> that was that like was elemental some bender of my has some of my elemental bender moments. has done Jormag and he's not even fifty one. <laughs> he's done Jormag twice. <laughs> um, so you go to Durin. It's I I think the general reaction from the the one to eighty curve is people either either people um, noticed it along the way and are happy with how long it took them or people the best cases were people didn't even notice that they did 80 till they 80 like they just had, they just had fun and got 80 like oh, naturally i, I know like, I, I, I do know that there are there are numerous times where i will look down and realize i've gained like three levels and didn't even realize it yeah and that, that's happened to a lot of people um which is kind of crazy if you look at the time, yeah. relative times, 150 to 200 hours is nothing compared to, for example, World of Warcraft to hit max level, like straight up. Or, oh, or yeah. Star Wars. That, that's crazy. What, what I really think is, is brilliant for them is there's still experience needed after 80. Yeah. Uh, with the whole skill point. Because mm-hmm. like it's, uh, I'm 80 now, but I still like, okay, I have to, I want to get this next level so I can get a skill point so I can use it on <laughs> blueprints. <laughs> um, but... Uh, yeah, it, it it is it is an amazing uh, idea to have it. So like, okay, I've max level, but there's still stuff to do. That's awesome. Yeah, with this right. experience, highly agree. So anything else, Durin? I mean, like you never even notice you have trade points or extra skill points because you're just playing the game. Yep. That's happened to me multiple times. I, I, I generally don't spend them until I've had like three of them built up because I just forget about them. Yeah, it, it's yeah. And again, that 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 exceeded expectations for me. If you're talking about uh, whether you want to make skill points. I have 176 skill points to spend. <sighs> but yeah, again, if you're talking about whether it was to exceed the expectations, I was interested to see if the flat leveling curve planned out, and it totally did. And I was, I was actually yeah. legitimately surprised that it did in the first place, um, which is cool. But anything, anything else, Darren? Like, do you have anything else you 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 were expecting from Guild Wars Two that it delivered on for you? Um, I guess the only other real thing is. Uh, Dungeon difficulty. I, I specifically yeah. talking about non-explorable. So uh, the wait, story mode so dungeons. What's your what? What side are you coming down on that? Too easy? Too hard? What are you expecting? Um, I was hoping for difficult, mm-hmm. and so I was glad to see that they were not just a walk in the park, even on yeah. the, the story mode. Yeah. Um, no, I, I've done. Uh, all we, of them and we talked about we talked about this in the past. And and definitely they maybe are in the wrong order in terms of what should be the first dungeon or whatever, <laughs> whatever the case might be. Yeah. Um, but it's good to see that there is still, like, there is challenge there and it requires you to play the game the way Guild Wars 2 is supposed to be played as opposed to, like, you can't go into those dungeons and stand there and use your abilities and expect to get through it. And yeah. that's what I like about it. And, oh, well, uh, if you run with me and your range, you can kind of get away with that. I, okay. So I, I want to use the extent, opportunity... Yeah. Because I wasn't planning to to hit this topic today, but I want to talk about it slightly. So, Holy, Holy Trinity, guys. Yeah, I was going to talk. About um, <laughs> what what do, what do you guys? Because just straight up dungeons, you cannot do tank, heal, or DPS. You you cannot. I, absolutely no. no way, fucking possible that you can yeah. beat them that way. It, it's it's not really that. It's it's more just like it's when, when we run the dungeon. It's like, well, Riven's going to be the one who like dies a lot. Stands there, off and takes, stands takes there and dies. Stands, stands and dies. <laughs> he finds a he finds a spot and to put off really his like, range. <laughs> I'm not really the healer as much as the like support. Like I I try and throw as many debuffs and as many like combo fields. Mm. And when people are down, I usually like I use like some ability to either get them up temporarily or I, I do enjoy that like two three people like people are distracting the boss the rest go get the person yeah and, yep. and so and yeah they, I, they definitely phase out the healer yeah yeah what, what, what i like about it is it, it definitely um is it's nice because there were a lot of naysayers leading up to and even even kind of you know post-release yeah we're like the holy trinity is not really gone it's still there you still have tanky builds and you still have <laughs> healy builds so the healer and tanks are still in the game. They're still necessary. For, like, no, they're not in the game. They're not <laughs> necessary. You can go a kind of, you know, uh, support style in terms of throwing out some some small passive heals. You can go a support route in terms of maybe being able to, to pop a, an ability and take a hit. Yeah. 
That's, that's, that's but there is it. no tanking in this game. You tank, you fucking die. Yeah. That's it, all there is to it, like, especially well, when you no, get into actually, horrible. What, what Riven does is he takes some hits, he falls over, and we just get him back up again. And then he, take, he just takes a few more hits, falls over again. <laughs> Yeah, straight up. Like when me and Revan, he, he doesn't straight die, but yeah, he he, he keeps falling over. Yeah, he did, he definitely goes <laughs> down. Um, when me and Revan had like did dungeons together, like we did a lot together towards well a couple of weeks ago, I think it was. Um, it was it was a case of like he he was the guardian and he could take more hits than me. I, I'm playing warrior as usual. Um, but I we look I, we looked at our team composition and I said hey, my my thought process wasn't hey I have to spec tanky. And and help him out at the front because we have um, three DPS essentially three glass cannon spec and Revan as the only piece, person close to tanky. Um, instead, I went, "Hey, I should probably be in melee a little bit longer. I suspect close to melee, so I should bring a mace shield and maybe be able to take one or two hits, so he doesn't necessarily take all of them." And that was my, me playing support as a warrior. Like that—that that was it. Yeah. Like, that's all I had to do. I didn't have to respec. I didn't have to do anything crazy like that, but it meant something to my team, and I definitely added to this experience. Well, I, I, I hope to think I was, I did, but yeah, like things like that is what you do in Guild too. You don't, yeah, and, and, and like I think what a lot of the problem is a lot of people when they heard that that you know Guild Wars Two is getting rid of the Holy Trinity, what pe- a lot of people took that as is oh that means everybody's DPS, everybody's just all damage all the time. I know that's not the case. <laughs> You still no. need support Try because that. otherwise this game is... Try that. Have fun with some a- of these bosses. Yeah. Like you <laughs> well, because like, otherwise, if that was the case, like, every fight would just be a fucking Zerg fest. Like, that's yeah. all it is. Mm-hmm. There would be no strategy to, to the fights whatsoever. So and- you do still have to have some support there. Again, especially in these explorables. Yeah. And that's, that's but that support is not thing, a designated though. healer. Because um, if you look at the world bosses, that is just a Zerg fest. I don't, I don't care what you say. Yeah. Those are no strategy maybe those. the best example of that. Yeah, like everyone just like puts down everything they can, deeps is down Actually, the world boss, and it's over. Always drop some the of these, fields. some yeah. of the bosses in a raw, and some of the later world bo- or area bosses require a bit stra- a strategy. Yeah, a, a, if you're not paying more. attention at Grenth, and no one knows what to do with those fucking shades, you'll be there for five hours trying to beat that boss. <laughs> that, well, that's good to hear. Uh, burn his health down. Because I've, I've they don't require, done they don't require the precision necessarily that you, that maybe the explorable dungeons do, and that's kind of the difference. Like that is that's one case, and of course we're talking about more people in it, so it's it, it's kind of impossible to have a reading that make that even remotely a complex fight because you are yeah. talking about forty people, fifty people on a single fight. Like at some point, it does have to be a big health bar and people whittling it down, right? Um, well, for, for positive as a negative, like, I personally don't like that style of play, but whatever, it's, like, it's up to you. Um, what's, well, what is it? Lissa is somewhat of a complicated fight because yeah. if everyone zergs her and you don't kill her in time, like she can reset because one of the places you were supposed to have people defending gets overrun. And now you have to go redo that event. And while you're redoing that event, she regenerates her health, or another one star, uh, another one gets taken. So you well, have to I think do that I think the again. big difference is with those world bosses, the strategy is very much in big strokes. Yeah, it's it's Whereas, a a lot of people coordinating to some extent, um, but the actual fights themselves aren't particularly like you're not having a situation like, for example, the ranger boss in Aslan Catacombs, which is still one of my favorite bosses to date. Which where you have to, everyone has to t- look at his animations, dodge when he needs to dodge. And you have to have someone pulling his aggro to some extent, or when he starts pulling your aggro, you have to you have to dis- disassemble for anything you're doing and spend as much of your time trying to stay alive to distract him so everyone else can put deeps down. Um, you don't have like micromanaging like that, which is something you can't ask for. Again, we're talking about world bosses here, which is kind of my, the point I was making. Um, there's no real micromanaging of effects or like real deep interplay between builds. At that level, I think what happened with it is the like it's a double edged sword of like oh you don't need a group you can just you know join up and do these yeah. things but then it results in just this massive swarm yeah. mm-hmm. and I found that actually like this is more, like the case is more from Worldly World than like the other end game stuff like a Raj because I've done more mm-hmm. of that but you can get a lot done with a five man group yeah. if you form it up yeah if it's you not can required but... you can five man Duena like straight up that five man. Cool. Every phase of Dwayne, I want to say. That's pretty awesome. It's, it might take you a while to do the last one, and who's ever in melee range is going to have to be on ball because if that first attack hits you, it's going to hit you more than once. 
and then it's over. So yeah, pro, pro tip to anybody listening: if you're doing like the the stuff in or and you see just a smart player that's you're you're running with, invite them to the group. Yeah, you maybe want to form up a party. Yeah, you want to uh, actually party up because running together is pretty cool. But when it comes to a raw, it's pretty much every, or everything in in that kind of area. Um, you you definitely want to at least have some so form like of grouping it, to you. You want to be rolling with someone. It makes a difference. Like, it's more than just chatting with people because you see their health more actively. You see what debuffs they have and all yeah. that. And so that, that, that makes a big But bringing it back to the point, like, straight up, you see their health, you see their debuffs. Um, in Guild Wars 2, you're not a healer. Like, you can't, you can't necessarily help them with that to a large extent. Maybe once every minute you can strip their debuffs from them. But in general... Once every two minutes you pull your book out as a guardian and... Yeah, the entire group. Exactly. Like that's once every two minutes. Like pretty much once or twice a fight, really. Um, but what you're really doing well, is some, some Jormax, some Jormax fights like four or five times. Yeah, exactly. People, but, people um, are paying attention. Jesus. But yeah, like straight up, what you're really doing is, especially in smaller fights, is you're um, applying help where you can. You're taking aggro when you can. You're you're walking between them and the enemy so the enemy tries to aggro on you or you're giving them a speed boost so they can move a little bit faster away from the enemy so they can avoid some hits themselves like swiftness is one of the best defensive um tr- like boons in the game that is highly appreciated for example if you have groove swiftness use it because it, it makes kiting so much easier um stuff like that is what you're doing to help as opposed to actually just like healing them up or removing their debuffs like, it's it's that part of the, the Holy Trinity, the healer part of the Holy Trinity is definitely gone to a large extent, but support being in its place totally is a thing. Like, and that, DPS is DPS. And, and as it should be. As it should be. Like, DPS is DPS. Um, being harder to kill is being hard to kill. Like you can't, as we said earlier, you can't tank, but support is my favorite part of Guild Wars 2. Not that I play support, but like everyone has to have a little bit of ability, awareness around them, that kind of stuff, to keep everyone else alive. And so I, I, I'm very, very much a convert to the removal of the healer, specifically from the Holy Trinity in Guild Wars 2. I think they nailed it. I, I, I've never, I wasn't a doubter, but I was quite justified when I finished the game and <coughs> experienced everything I would experienced in Guild Wars 2. You're a believer? I'm a believer. And I, I was I was Speaking a Speaking of believer. believing, the, the diabetes cells in the knees have made me cough way too much. I think I need to tap out for this one. All right. See you, noob. Oh, yeah. oh man, there's diabetes. <laughs> bye bye. Cheers, man. Um, so yeah, the whole trinity. That fuck it. Uh, so do you guys? All right. So my main problem is I didn't play many Holy Trinity games in the past, and since then I I don't think I could go back to one. But I I love the way Guild Wars Two does things where I don't have to necessarily rely on people around me, but everyone's kind of helping each other and that kind of stuff. What what do you what do you guys feeling that? Thurbleton, have you played a Holy Trinity game? I think I would like I would play one, but I would try and play one with the Guild Wars Two mentality. It's like you know, don't actually try and get hit, try and avoid damage. Right. But, but ha- have fighting. you played one in the past? Like have you, have you played WoW or Star um, Wars? Yeah, I, I did play WoW for a number of years. I was a, a tank, but it was more like you know, don't fight people. Like don't fight one person. Just engage six of them at one time to keep them busy. Right. And so, how, how do you feel about the like? Do, was it a large cult, like culture shock for you moving to the Guild Wars Two? Do you which ones do you prefer now? Oh, Guild Wars Two. <laughs> I want to Guild Wars Two question. podcast. Like <laughs> it, that's the thing. Like him coming from being a tank, and he seems to you know greatly prefer Guild Wars Two. I'm coming from a healer background where I, I played a healer pretty much most of the time that I played WoW in the, the six plus years I played it, and I same way. Like I would much prefer to play an MMO um, in the vein of Guild Wars Two. Than kind of the the standard Holy Trinity, so and like, and like we play those things that are getting that are have been gotten rid of. So do you feel because some of that comes for me, um, from me from my ability to, to play with anyone? Like I love the fact that um, I, I, some of you may have heard this from me before, but what, for example, if I'm jumping into PvP and I have like a tournament group together, I ask people what their build is, but then. The only reason I'm doing that isn't to say, oh, no, no, you should you should play this other thing instead. You, you, you're being a retard by playing that one. It's just to find out what their strengths and weaknesses are to see if we can accommodate them or slightly like shift our, our everyone's build slightly to attain something closer to uh, yeah. something filling all the gaps. 
Um, like, oh, you have this build, so we'll make you the roamer instead of yeah. maybe a, a capture um, exactly. or whatever. Yeah. I, or like for, like, for example, if it's, it's a guardian, oh, you're playing a deeps guardian. Okay, then we won't necessarily have you as a point defending point, but you're still probably better at that than someone else. So in a situ- situation where I had to choose between two people to defend this particular point, I'd choose you. Like st- Stuff like that is the kind of tactical decisions you're making born from the lack of Holy, Holy Trinity. But even more core of that is I can play with that guardian. Like I, I, I never. There's no doubt in my mind that I can be successful with that specific guardian versus a tank guardian. Like there's being able to group up with anyone you want to is my number one reason why I love the lack of holy trinity. You do not need yeah. to limit yourself in any way. Yeah, again, like coming from the uh, the holy trinity MMO, and and you know even within a guild trying to get a group together, like well, okay, guys, we need one more DPS and a healer, and there's like you know maybe two tanks and and. A, a few DPS that all would like to go to is like, well, I could take, I could take one of you guys. <sighs> Anybody know a healer? Anybody? <laughs> Anyone willing to or, or, or even worse, like, or even worse, like going, you know, to the, the like raiding. Like I, you know, I ran raids and stuff, and there were times where like we would have a healer not show up, and so we're spending fucking. I'm not even kidding. Upwards of forty five minutes trying to find a healer somewhere in that game that wanted to run it with us. <sighs> and like that well, doesn't exist in this one. Now it's just too. like. Hey, yeah. Well, the other side, the other side of that coin with like the whole uh, Trinity build is like it's it's. Are, are there many MMOs that are Trinity designed and not tiered content? And so it's like, well, we have this healer, but he doesn't have the gear for it, so we yeah. can't invite him. Uh, yeah. That, so yeah, the, so so many reasons. I just wanted to talk about that to, just to touch on that because I think that's one of the cases where Guild Wars Two has definitely met my expectations and exceeded a lot of people's expectations. Like for example, Durin, did you expect it to work? The non Holy um, Trinity thing, I, you know, the the idea of the Holy Trinity just going away, I, I couldn't comprehend that uh, coming into the game. So I kind of, I wasn't one of the people saying like, "Oh no, the Holy Trinity is it, it's it's there, it's got to be there or whatever." But it's more right. like I didn't understand how how are they going to pull this off and have the the fights not just be random chaos? Yeah, and to some extent they kind of are okay. or kind of can be. <laughs> yep, but. It's it's ordered chaos. <laughs> yeah, like they're like you, you, when you die, chaos. you know why you died. Yeah, exactly. It's not I'm like you just suddenly fucking fall over dead. Like you, you know what you did wrong. You know what you need to do in order to not die again next time. Yeah, and you know then can move on and and, and you know continue on or whatever. But like, it definitely exceeded my expectations because I I guess my expectations were non-existent because I just didn't know how they were going to do it. Revan. Uh, so I'm actually the only person here who hasn't played a Trinity game. So, Reverend, what are your thoughts? Did, did, did were you expecting it to work, or I I was expecting it to pro- like to work in a small way, like you know, like maybe you don't need a healer for this particular dungeon if you take this particular path, or maybe you could run without a dedicated tank on this path. But I wasn't expecting it to be like full hogs. Like you don't really need a healer. You probably you could run in there with. Five people with really tanky build, it might just take you two hours to do something that if you were more balanced with more DPS, you could do in like half an hour. Yeah. But it's still viable. And so, so what, what are your thoughts on that? Are you impressed with how, how they've managed it or has it exceeded I'm, your expectations? I'm, I'm crazy impressed with that. I didn't, um, I did not see that coming in a million years. That's, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm happy that that was the impression they get because that's the impression I was hoping it. For it to give, especially when I, I was one of the believers of the start, so I said, "Doubleton." I'm like, I'm impressed. I, I'm glad it succeeded the way it did. I, I sort of came in like, like ready for it to not be what everyone else is like. Oh, it's the best. It's, it's going to defeat. Wow, all these yeah, other not, things. Nah, not thing. <laughs> um, it's sort of like I've seen. Yes, there's like anyone can tank, but really, I'm only seeing heavy armor tanks. Like, I would love anyone in the Lincoln Force or Ooh. listening to this. Just like message me, it's like, hey, I am a necro tank, and I'm gonna prove it to you. We're gonna do this, dude. Dungeon. Specifically, in your case, we met mesmer a tank. mesmer tank that what? was unstoppable in PvP. I, I, I bet he'd work in dungeons as well. He was fucking. Well, no, unstoppable. It's, I, I'm I'm good at P, in PvP, but that's just because it's like they can't like people trying to target me. I just keep screwing with. No, them. no, it, this this but no no. It was, it was yeah. we literally could not out damage his toughness and his damage reduction and his healing. Oh, I need a best friend that person. Yeah, man. that was he was he was in a uh, one of the um, 
what's his face? The actual PvP guilds. I forgot which one it was. I think it was either VVV or um, he might have been Team Paradigm. But yeah, okay. he, he was. It was intense. Like it was me and a thief. So two DPS specs against one Mesma tank. He didn't even do too oh, many I phantasms or shit. He didn't even have many illusions. He just literally out healed us against a normal target. I'd be doing about one thousand eight hundred to two thousand a hit um, with my axe. Was it, was oh, he, it using mantra of healing. I don't know. But I was doing six hundred, where I'd normally be doing <laughs> wow. two thousand a hit against a mesmer. Um, I don't know. I didn't even know what yeah, he was doing. I've seen the light then. Yeah, it, it, the build's out there. I just don't know it. Anyway, um, so I'm happy to hear that. Uh, I, 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 find I, that build. I would definitely agree that heavy armors do do tanking well. I think Suki has shown that you can probably do a pretty decent um, elementalist tank, but we've never tried it in, in a dungeon format. We've only tried it in PvP, so we'll see. Yeah. Anyway, um, doesn't the, doesn't his elementals have less base health than me? Yeah, it's like thirteen k base health. I don't think you can do that. <laughs> I don't think you can do that in a um, dungeon because you just get one shot. I've had bosses hit me for twenty k, <laughs> and I have heavy. And I have, but you have the same base armor as him. So base health is him. No, I don't. So base health, oh, like yeah, like, like yeah, the health, the armor is it's crazy. Yeah, I, it's a little bit like different. Three so. times as much armor as he had at one point. I, I have no idea how you spec that out. It, it's, it was an interesting build, nonetheless. I, Benny couldn't yeah. kill him, so that's... He spec straight DP, he spec straight DPS when he was running dungeons. Yeah. To the point where if he got looked at, <laughs> I was afraid he was going to die. I, I think um, the thing was, at, at a point where we'd all done about the same amount of content, I mean, he played a bit more than me, but he hadn't played as much as you. Um, I was sitting at 200 deaths for my life. We were all love ladies. 200 deaths for my life um you were sitting at like 300 no i was at like 230 right something and then he was at like 400 (laughs) yeah i think he stopped telling people his hours as well as his deaths (laughs) they're just too high now no because he was doing that and then he figured out that the uh pvp that's counted oh yeah that yeah that's kind of lame um anyway thurbleton how, how I want to get this puff piece out of the way because well, yeah, I have a lot yeah, to complain about. Like the expectations, it was like it's. Uh, I think the big thing that uh, I've, uh, like I expected and glad happened was the like the combat, like both with PvP and PVE. But it's like the the you're still grinding. I right. mean, like the d- dynamics are, are a lot of fun. It's just it is really just like the same thing over and over again. It's it's glossed over in, in enough of a way, like sort of how. Um, uh, five ten years ago, questing was like it, it's this amazing new thing, but really it's just grinding. <laughs> yep. Now dynamic events are the am- amazing new thing, mm-hmm. but it's still just grinding. Yeah, it's it's fun. I'm enjoying it's, it. It's, but it's, it's a just, different type. Yeah, of quest. It, it's definitely it's 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 a step forward from what questing is, but it's still really just questing. Yeah. I, I I would I would agree with that, like, especially if because I was really impressed to see um, the. So something simple as an escort mission in the um, for first areas of, of Ascalon and so on, so not Ascalon, but uh, uh, Kessex Hills and all, all that kind of area, the, the, the past parts near Divinity's Reach, the Char Homer and so on and so forth. I, I, was like, I was happy to see even something as simple as escort mission because they happen dynamically, like, as they're supposed to. You're walking through an area, yeah. you see this Dolyak in the distance, you walk towards it. Hey, it's actually a dynamic event. Um, that was really awesome. We, during the beaters, when I started playing Guild Wars 2, but as you get through the game and you can see the same objectives popping up in a raw, not a raw, but or that that's that's a bit much to me. There are entirely too many yeah. escort dynamic events in this game. Yeah, there's this. I, I would like to see. You haven't even been to You haven't been to yet. <laughs> yeah, you haven't been to or yet. <laughs> you start half of those temple. Mi- you start all of those temple missions with an escort. With a fucking Fuck. escort. Like there's literally just escort. There's holding a point. Balthazar is. Balthazar is three escort missions, if I'm not mistaken. Right. <sighs> yeah. Th- th- and they're so hard because, like, oh, it's we're, we're losing fear. It's like, oh, we're going to start fighting. And then we're going to, like, path back to where we started <laughs> and then keep walking slowly. All the while, we're gaining more fear. It's like, by the time you get there, they're about to, like, oh, we're, we're <sighs> that's, that's, two steps from fishing. That's, 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 no, that's, that's the part that's the part I don't understand. Players. That's the part I don't understand. We're, to- in, we're in 2012 now in, in, in terms of, like, game mechanics and stuff. How do we not have... An AI that is smart enough to realize we are now about ten feet further up on the road because of this <laughs> encounter. We don't need to fucking run back to the exact spot we left off in oh. order to continue walking. Like how? 
How do we not have smart pathing on these goddamn escort missions? But even then, like, straight up. If, if we make them any smarter, they gain sentience and Skyrim happens. <laughs> so we, 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 just, we can't do it. But like, We've reached the cap. Correct me on this, but there's there's only about three types of objectives I've seen go with, too. That there's holding a point against enemies. There's escort missions. And then there's assaulting a point against enemies. That that That's that's it. That's all I've seen. Well, and there, there, there's um, gathering as well. Yeah, there's, yeah, gathering. gathering stuff, yeah. So four. I, so I, well, I, okay. The thing about it is I that, think, it, like, if you really boil right, down MMO questing, three of those. If you really so, boil down MMO questing, it is kill X number of enemies, mm-hmm. defend this area, escort, or gather and bring back. Yeah, uh, and that's that's pretty much it. Right? Again, again, like this so, is this is why this is why a lot of, uh, like Guild Wars Two did not like. It's not some 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 big revolution. They didn't create. Some like crazy new ideas of how um, MMO PVE works. They, right. They made some some really interesting and unique changes to it in terms yeah. of like instead of instead of static quests, there are you no know, hearts. Instead of you know again more static quests, there are the dynamic events. Like they 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 shook it up a little bit to make it interesting, but they didn't completely reinvent it. Yeah, I, I mean, it's they, just we are still crazy. doing the same stuff we've always done. They didn't reinvent the wheel; they just put spinners on it. <laughs> yeah, totally. yeah, like. That's it's kind of pretty fucking sweet the spinners. problem I have with it. Like, if, so to round out Roll this out part of the discussion, teams. for me, I'm I, I wanted to talk about this with Noob, but Noob obviously I had to tap out. But um, as a Guild Wars One player, I can say that the problem I have with Guild Wars Two is that I came into it with a huge amount of expectations, and it met so many of them and exceeded so many others. Like, I, I, if, if I was looking at Guild Wars Two as an overall concept, I would say it is. A fantastic product that I'm really happy with, and I spent 200 plus hours with the game. But there, are, it's it's kind of a thing where, especially coming to Guild Wars One, a lot of the like the awesome stuff in Guild Wars Two, not in terms of the actual gameplay because it's a very different game, but it's like things that Reunet does, way they approach problems, types of quests, types of writing they have in the game, areas, um, the visual styles of areas. I, I, I obviously Ara is like one of the most unique things I've actually seen in the video game. I, I. I it's an amazing area, in my opinion. Like pretty much the entire or or is a fantastic continent. Um, like Melkor's Leap, the light, even just the lighting there. I haven't seen that in many other games. Um, oh God, Melkor. Yes, Fuck Melkor. So pretty, but so no, not the, such a bitch. I'm not saying the area. I'm such saying the fucking character Melkor is a asshole. <laughs> you haven't, oh, no, I've you haven't done the Duena. I've met him. I've met him. Uh, no, I've done. Actually, I've done Duena. I've done Duena. Um, God, he's Duena. the guy. He, Melkor's Leap. He he does the thing, and she. And you he loves her escort and stuff, someone right? to Duena, do that event, then you port across the area <sighs> to escort someone else there who periodically stops so you can DPS him. <sighs> anyway, um, so yeah, I, I had so many expectations going to give us too. Um, I'm happy in so many ways, but I'm also quite annoyed in other ways like there's many things that they've done here that they did in the original guild wars but haven't followed through with like stuff, stuff like that is what's detracting from the game for me which is kind of a weird thing to say like i'm, I'm really happy with it but i'm kind of pissed at, it at the same time so love hate relationship for me with guild wars 2 it's it, I, I don't know i i, I yeah I, I i haven't played the game as much as i was expecting to but at the same time i couldn't point to any one thing aside from the ones we're going to talk about in a second um that has attributed to that effect i, I love Wars 2 but it's not quite where i wanted it to be it's kind of crazy i i, I run a Guild Wars 2 podcast it has Guild Wars 2 met expectations i don't know and, and i was expecting that to be a huge yes when the Guild Wars 2 came out which is kind of the problem in the first place so we're moving over to um the second part of this conversation which is what do you think still needs work which i, I think is the kind of more interesting part about Guild Wars 2. I mean, we all came into this um, this podcast knowing to some extent what we were going to talk about at this part. Who wants to start? Who, who, wants, who thinks their issue with Guild Wars 2, thing that needs work, is the foremost? I can go first. Or I want to go first, I should say. What's yours? Uh, world v. World. I think there need to be some changes made. <sighs> but I love love love. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's interesting. Uh, what 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 would you ch- what, what do you think is the problem with the world of and what do you would what would you change? Uh, I don't actually know how you would change it, but once someone gets a pretty big lead, there's no coming back from it. 
Thurbleton? Uh, so Th- Thurbleton's our Wolf of guy in, in Linking Force, as I said, this is the top of the show. But so w- what is your response to that? Um, the issue is, and in, in like on prayer podcasts, we've, we've hinted on it, is it's not so much like they've taken over the whole map. It's the like we've like they've demorally beaten us. <laughs> no one wants to get on. Yeah. It, the, the first week, Yak's been like held everything. Mm-hmm. And even when no one was fighting, there were cues on most like the Borderlands and EB and everything. Everyone just wanted to get in and enjoy the win. Right. This past week, we got stomped, and everything was, like, always well, not cued. If that's what the problem is, that, that's good, actually, because that means there is a fix for well, it. Yeah. Like, well, there's mean, a very well, easy fix. Uh, that is to incentivize um, players on the losing servers to want to join in. Like, maybe increase the um, rewards that they get for doing things like taking keeps. Back. And taking towers and things like that. And I, when I say rewards, I don't mean for their server. I mean personal rewards. Hmm. Yeah. Like and, maybe and give the other them thing is like they need to make it easier to get those because once like once you've taken over the whole map, and I've I've had to deal with this like everything's upgraded to all get out, and so you need like you need slightly better stuff to take them on, and like well you, let's raid the supply camp only you, you can only get ten people to get supply but you need like error carts to like get people off the walls and you need like more than one ram to take a door down because it's. Fortified yeah, all heck. Because of the the length of these battles, I think that to some extent, World vs. World needs a little bit of rubber banding. Yeah. But we, I spent two not, hours not, like, trying to base to make it and did nothing yeah. to it. <sighs> what was that, Thibbleton? Like that, well, it, it's not something to, like, just, like, something to uh, take care of the let's get back in the fight and get us a foothold issue. Yeah. Like, not something that would change... When it's like, because when it's prime time, uh, there's there's cues back up and everything, and it's more or less balanced. But just getting to that point for the morning and like the the uh, overnight times, right? That, so, rubber so banding I know, I know that, is one of the things in video games that I've always had troubles with. Because, for example, um, Duran, you might be able to. I'm not sure which of you are actually able to talk about this, but having watched a couple of WoW podcasts in the past. Um, They've done things to help Alliance versus Horde specifically, like yeah. the the I'll losing side servers, in the yeah. Eternal Conflict. Um, to, does anyone like kind of demonstrate to me what that was, or if it was effective? Like, Durin, do you have any like perspective on that? Um, I, be- I believe what it was is on on PvP servers where one side was um, heavily overpopulated compared to the other. Um, on the underpopulated side, I believe you would get like um, experience boosts, right? Uh, I think you got a you passive, like, like a passive a bonus as well to your your stats or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's some, something like that. Yeah, and tenacity. It, yeah, yeah. Well, well, that that's specifically in the the PvP itself, and in, in the the world versus or the battlegrounds uh, or whatever. No, not, not in the battlegrounds itself, but actually in the world PvP. Right. Um, yeah. If one if one side was stronger than the other, yeah, that you got a tenacity um, buff on the the um, less populated side. It helped kind of bolster your people and allow you to, as a smaller group, take on the, the larger group in a more balanced fight. So the I've heard about this as well. My issue with that is what was the world in, in Guild Wars 2? And so the, the reason I wanted to point that out is how like, other people have had this issue. Like This is an issue that isn't unique to Guild Wars 2. Um, in a large-scale like conflict, and if you, even if you trace this back to wars in real life... Um, Unless there's a way for the defeated or losing side to be significantly um, boosted in in terms of not mor- morals but uh, what's that like morale? Heart, interesting yeah, difference, yeah. but yes, in actual morale, <laughs> there 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 is no way for them to come back. Um, and the hard thing for that is if you offer people in Guild Wars Two, for example, um, things like passive stat bonuses, that's not a huge help because where Wolf vs. Well, at least from my understanding, is decided is keep defense, like upgrading your shit properly and having enough, or on the assaulting side, having enough organization in terms of what you're assaulting and as well as having enough siege weapon, weapons and money to pump into well, appropriate siege equipment to take things down. Not only not only that, but but I mean, the, with the way that the progression and, and the that world versus world was handled in, in this game is very different from wow yeah and wow you do have tiered content so even in pvp so you have you have stats that you can kind of work around whereas in this game the idea of world versus world is everyone has the same stats so you can't really 
bolster the others because at that point you're you're actually just giving them too large an advantage right. over the other people. I think instead what they could do is again they could give personal rewards for people to join join in the fight on their server um, through means of like maybe increased ex- experience gains, um, maybe increased well, gold actually, drops. They, they they do have that with the outman buff, which gives you bonus XP, karma, and maybe influence. Right. But it's okay. it's not enough. I mean, like when because you only get the big uh, amounts from taking the big places like keeps and castles. Mm-hmm. Like when you're outmanned, you don't have the manpower to do that. Yeah. And, and maybe one, and, one other thing they could do is if if you if you are on that side that is you know losing bad enough that you are the outmanned or you're, you have the outmanned buff, maybe also along with that decrease the cost of siege weapons by like fifty percent or something. That's like that's kind of the you, thing, right? Give you the ability to actually. Fight back. That's that's that is kind of where I think they could improve, uh, or like what they could mm-hmm. change. Because people, at least again from my my perspective of War vs. the World, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Doubleton, aren't as important as resources in War vs. the World, like to a large extent. Like if you can, if you could have a shitload of arrow carts and enough people demand them to defend a wall, for example, that's kind of all you need. It doesn't matter how many more people you have on top of that. Or if you're assaulting, um, if you have enough people to build a trebuchet, they can just kind of fucking wander off after that. Because that, they're not helping against the wall to to a large extent. Maybe helping against the people on top of the wall to some extent, but in general, the trebuchet is more important than having those 10 people required to, to give you the supply to build it. Um, it's, it's not even the, the, the treb. What it is, it's like it's... Man, manpower is important, yep. Um, like if you're doing like the, the basic thing, attacking a door with auto attack is the, the dumbest, dumbest thing, thing in the world. I slap. Stupidest people thing I've seen. People slap people to do that. Do it. <laughs> it's what, what people need to do is like okay, while well, we have like one or two rams hitting mm-hmm. this door, we need to look around because the second a person gets in like our sight while we're attacking this door, he's just going to dodge roll into the door, and then he'll be like he manning the defender. arrow card, like yeah. you said, because like. Eight, like five to ten people can hold back yeah. a zerg if the points defended exactly. enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I've defended a keep with not a keep tower. Might have been a tower with like four people on arrow carts, and, and that's it. Yeah. Held, the, I, we just we just focused this at the was door. in beta, but I held off a, a, a zerg by myself on a necro. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, and it's just having smarter players is is a big definitely. help. Definitely. But but, but then straight up like the the equipment that is available to both sides winning and losing in mm-hmm. Wolves' world is something that they have to subsidize to some extent because because uh, the, no matter how much like personal gains you give five people so for example if you're getting a two hundred percent bonus to karma XP and gold rewards and drops like having plus five hundred percent magic fine it doesn't matter because if you're if you're five people walking into Wolves' world. You couldn't take a keep. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. None, none, none of that does anything for you to actually turn the tide. Yeah, like you can take a supply camp, mm-hmm. but you're not going to be able to take a keep with five people. Like, am, am I mad if you take that and the other thing is, you, like, you are, you are outmanned. As soon as you start to take a point and show yourself on yeah. the map, everyone so, who's AFK at like the castle checking the trading post is like, oh, let's start yeah. fighting, and then they they rush you, and it's over. Yeah. So, like, for example, I, if think, I think more importantly, inst- I think with the way they're sitting right now. They're incentivizing getting bodies into World vs. World, mm-hmm. whereas what they need to be incentivizing is getting those people out there and, and giving them the tools to actually fight exactly. back and, and yeah. yes. get so, some of these keeps and towers like back my, themselves. My ideas for um, for World vs. World to, to balance it uh, would, on, on top of giving extended personal rewards, because that, that's important, like giving people more reward for playing World vs. World, especially when they're yeah. losing, overcom- overcomes that morale hit you take by losing in the first place, to some extent. Um, but stuff like, in my opinion, you know how at the start of World vs. World, everyone has their local um, maps, so everyone starts with a specific share of each map, um, which can essentially be called theirs. Everyone has their three keeps and their own map and so on and so forth. Um, my idea is... If you take that back, so not necessarily um, assault in the first place, but if you're taking back what was once yours, there should be some bonus to the amount of supply in that keep. Something as basic as that to help you repair quickly. Or there should be a huge amount of gold returned to you so you can get stuff like um, barricaded walls up quicker and stuff like that. Stuff to help regaining what's lost rather than necessarily always helping assaulting. That's, That's at least in my opinion. Thoughts? 
um, that actually sounds like a really yeah. good idea. Like, rec- like you get uh, you get the basic bonus, but then you also get another bonus for just reclaiming what was once like, yours. Yeah, yours. yeah. So like, maybe whatever, maybe you can keep some of the siege equipment they built in there. Oh, that'd be awesome. Let's say, yeah. Let's say, yeah, like that, I was actually just thinking that too. Yeah, ballistas and arrow cards yeah. on, on a wall. You get one of the ballistas and two of the arrow cards. That'd be awesome. Or just well, in general, well, that if is you can, awesome just from a general, coding trans, like hard. from a coding point of view, that's just. So <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, what I was gonna say instead, maybe like when you when you take back something that you once had, you get like kind of the basic level of defense stuff there already. Like you just. Oh, that'd get, be cool. Like if, if you had an oil there, as soon as you took it back, that would be awesome. Like just, yeah, just exactly. something. Well, you actually, have an oil. Um, you have like an arrow cart. You've got you know maybe a trebuchet on there, and that's. I don't that even know why people build defenses. oil anymore. No one falls for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's a required upgrade. Yeah. What first off, what like what I see on the forums a lot, and and I love that no one here is suggesting it, is people just keep complaining. Can we just go back to either twenty four hours or two to, like three to four days or oh, something? No, no, no. And I I do not want to see no. that at all. Bec- um, but what what I suggested, and it's along the similar lines, is just making it so that the people attacking can't do as many upgrades as uh, like the people who it's their home. Yeah. Keep. That'd be cool. Which, it's a double-sided thing. It's easier to take back, but then also, if an enemy is holding a keep where they can't upgrade the door or the yeah. walls, that's, that's impressive. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it all comes back to, like, helping equalization. Ma- making, um, yeah, ma- making attaining that equal state an easier state than exceeding. So everyone's kept equal for the majority of it. So, for example, if I look at, if I opened up B, which is the menu for World vs. World in, in normal play, and I see that Yaxben has, like, one supply camp and nothing else, I have no incentive to go in World vs. World. It's a sad it's a, day. Yeah, it's, a, it's like, well, oh, let's do yeah, some dungeons. Just, just that was this week, man. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, lo- I logged on one point. We had nothing. Yeah, we had nothing. It's just like, oh, why God. would I even? But if there, were, if I, if I knew that if I took one of the supply camps back, it would be significantly harder for the enemy to take it back again from us. That would be awesome. Well, it is because yeah. you can't. If you take the supply camp back, the guild, uh, the veteran guy there is unkillable. Oh yeah, for three minutes. Right. Well. Unkillable by direct damage. You put enough dots on him, he'll die. <laughs> but yeah, like, so, stuff but like that, that for a again, like that, of time. That, that's not enough because that doesn't give you enough. Like, yeah, that lets you know, like, oh boy, I did all this work and now I can hold this place for three minutes and then they'll just zerg it down. Yeah, but what do you guys think of um, stuff that was thrown around before the game came out? Like, for example, um, some things can only be turned over after a time limit. Like things like a supply camp can only be taken back after half an hour. Like, what, what do you guys think of stuff like that? They would have to change the scoring system a bit, so right. like you're not just like swapping that and controlling that. Mm-hmm. But I like the idea of like you can't, like you're not going to get an instance where it's just two zergs trading this point back and forth every five minutes. Yeah, like, it's straight up. If like if this if this keep is taken, it's now theirs for like a, a like. So like basically, the, it, it it incentivizes like moving around the map and taking other places. Yeah. Rather than, like you said, like hopping back and forth between and and, and perhaps more importantly, it would, give you a, it would give you a chance to build up defense. Yeah, and it gives you a chance to build up defense, but it yeah. also rewards coordinated attack because and, yeah, it also if you if five people somehow take down a keep by themselves and that keep is now your service for six hours, that's a huge reward as opposed to those five people now realizing they could not possibly. Um, upgrade the stuff in the keep because they just can't afford it because sh- shit costs money. And on top of that, the enemy now is knowing you're there and you haven't been able to upgrade anything, so you're going to lose the keep immediately. Like, th- stuff like that won't happen if you have, like, that time gating on stuff. Thur- but Thurbleton's... I-, I can tell Thurbleton's kind of thinking about this because he's a bit more world versus world shabby than the rest of us. How, how do you think that would Rise. affect it? Um, I mean, like, it, it, the keeps do all have a like an inner door secret. Like, you can you can... You can uh, begin to take right. it back, and more often than not, that's usually how those mm-hmm. are taken. Um, I would like to see more of a, a middle ground sort of thing, because right now it's like, well, we can take you know sentries, doliacs, and supply right. camps, but if we want to get any ground, we have to like we need a zerg to take out this tower. There's no easy way yeah. to do it, um, and, and I would like to see more of that. Just, just, just something, just something, just because at, yeah. at the moment, what yeah. I can say is I agree that Wolf Wolf is a bit borked, Espe- especially seeing stuff like uh, what Ruin is doing. 
Jesus Christ, and and things like um, abusing the uh, dungeon, so the the jumping puzzles. I was gonna say, wait, Ru- Ruin? Are we talking about the guild? Yeah, the guild's Ruin. Oh God, what the fuck what is are they doing? doing in this game? <laughs> What are they doing? Um, Ruin ruins every fucking game. What are they doing in this one? Uh, in, in this one, there, it was a stuff where um, they had this thing where, well, we, we speculate to some extent, but um, they got it to the point where they had enough money going into Wolf Wolf and Siege goals going into Wolf Wolf where they were able to um, circumnavigate the enemy's spawns area, spawn areas with Siege Golems and people so and they're on their home maps. Right. Um, and and pretty much any other map. Um, so they're spawn right. camping. They're spawn camping. They were stopping any. Form that sounds like ruin. Of, uh, progress in Wolf Wolf. Yep, but aren't like you ruin. invincible in your spawn? So it's it's uh, funny because people. Yeah, but they couldn't leave it. Like it, it was just outside the range of your legendary defenders. But they just had like they, there's the images of there being like six siege golems just, across the entrance. Oh, they just had a wall of golems waiting there. So if you stepped out, you were dead. you were dead. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah it's so funny because uh, people like talk, like talk shit more on like. Um, you know, Reddit guilds and how terrible they are and yeah. you know, the goon squad and how terrible they are. Mm-hmm. And in, in my experience, Ruin has probably one of the worst <laughs> I didn't um, even know there were things. groups of people. Bec- well, I, I know of them because the they become very big, at, at least recently. I'm not sure how recently, but uh, there's a there's a probably one of the biggest uh, uh, casters on Twitch. Right. Um, who is a... He, Primarily as a WoW player, um, but he's he's been dabbling in other MMOs um, recently. He's play, he played some Star Wars. Uh, he played some Terra, um, and, and he he became a part of this Ruin Guild, and and that has all since blown up because he has thousands and thousands of viewers who all want to be in the guild with him, right? Um, and and they basically just fucking troll everything, right? Like they just. They just try to ruin everyone's day. That's kind of what that guild does. Um, also, um, what I've but again, yeah, this is just one guild. But things like this, there's, there's some things that you can do in World vs. World that's very difficult to counter, and to, to my extent, means there's extreme lack of balance. For example, um, yeah. for a while when we were versing, it wasn't Darkhaven. It might have been Blackgate in the 24 hour runs, but not the more recent Blackgate run. Um, what they did was on their home map, they uh, lined up, so they had they took the like tower nearest to uh, you and keep obviously nearest to the spawning area of each side, each um, opposing faction's base camp. Um, and what they did was within range, like just outside of the legendary defender range, um, there would be a literally a lineup of about twelve arrow carts. <laughs> um, so, and you only have one exit to your spawn area. So, no, you don't. Oh, no, do you? Don't. you? There's there's side exits. There, there's, okay. there's, there's a side yeah, exit. Side yeah. So at the time we didn't know. Nobody knows. Yeah, about at the time them. we didn't know, yeah. and I'm, I'm not sure if they were covered either. But like literally just outside our exit, it was just a wall of arrow cars. Get to your side exits. Sorry, I don't think. Well, it's get like to you 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 exit. can. It just takes more right. work. Like you can cover every single like path. Yeah, out and, of and that's something you can do in Wolf Wolf, and that shouldn't be doable in my opinion. Like literally being able to um, completely lock out an enemy team. Shouldn't be doable, but it is. And to some extent, that's the freedom and wonder of World vs. World. But stuff like that makes me just not want to play it. Because I prefer an equal playing ground. Stuff like structured PvP or dungeon runs. Stuff where I know that I'll have fun. If I if there's a decent chance of me just not having fun of being just absolutely shut down World vs. World, I, I have no incentive to play it. But that's, yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyway, anything else about World of? I, I think we've hit that with a... Um, well... This isn't really about Wolva, but it's, well, it kind of is, mm-hmm. but it's like the 24-hour transfer thing. What's that? What do you mean? The 24-hour well, you transfer. You can still transfer for free. Yeah, it's the free transfer. The Server fact transfer. That you can, the fact that you can transfer mm-hmm. from... I'll just use Gates of Madness because everyone on Yaxpan hates Gates of Madness. <laughs> I'm cheating. No, it's Black, Black Gate was the ones who had all the orbs. Right. They had all the orbs, but Gates of Madness was apparently cheating right. from what I've been reading on the forums. Uh, like people on Gates of Madness would switch servers when we would steal the orbs or look like we were getting ready to steal one. They would be the one who took the orb and then they would just run it back to the people on their server and switch back over. That's fucked. Yeah. That, that's fucked. So I, would, I don't know how feasible this is, but ArenaNet could set it up where you can't transfer to a server that you're facing in World v. World. Oh, that would be nice. 
And it should be feasible. That's definitely going to I mean, be a thing. Are, the transfers aren't happening that often. Especially when we're talking about one week long rounds now. Like, imagine a situation where... Because um, it's, it's very difficult because obviously you can't destroy anything of your own in World vs. World. Um, so to some extent, that has been blocked off. But something as simple as... I, I mean, you could... If the person who didn't create the siege equipment doesn't click on it, you could probably just make it so it's being used horribly. Oh yeah, uh, or just aim it at a wrong, well, aim it at a wall. Again, going back to ruin, all. what they did was um, when they were fighting whoever their, these screen caps came from, they had uh, people from ruin transfer to the enemy server and then just literally call out on the map. Yep, wherever they were they going. Do that. Yep. They did that in uh, they did that in Star Wars as well. Yep. And and what server are they on? Yeah. So we know to avoid. I, I, don't, I don't remember. I can check for you. Um, but this that's if, you know. if they're doing they're just giving other people the idea to do it as well. Like this is things that are reading. There's a holes in the system that Arena has. Um, like like servers making packs to fa- uh, lock out another server stuff like that. Yeah, it's like just stuff you can't avoid and 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 reasons when it comes to World vs. World that like when I, pre pre launch. When World vs. World was a re- relatively um, carefree event and everyone just had fun, that was it was my favorite game type by far off the lot. But now it's become in very common serious for some servers out there and what they're doing to exploit that and obviously like just blatant cheating like some servers do at the moment with that stuff like the um, the experimental rifle That's, hack and stuff like that. Um, that speed hack I saw was hilarious. Which speed hack is that? There's a footage. This guy's got a Twitch feed, and it's at like 30 minutes into it. Mm-hmm. This guy's standing there, and then all of a sudden he is about 50 feet in the other direction, and then another second later he's 50 feet, and then he's just gone. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, he's just gone. <laughs> what? It's, it looked like he was. It looked like he was it's just like lagging. Slenderman or something. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So it kind of like, looked like weird here, stuff like you know that. What the, uh, the thieves like. Five on the short bow does like the just that teleport. Yeah, it looked like he was doing that every second. <sighs> which, which is kind of interesting because these issues don't really pop up in PVE because obviously it's all friendly, friendly. And in structured PvP, I haven't seen any random bullshit like this um, yet. So again, Wolf Wolf is one of those things where it's a large scale P- like uh, competitive format. So stuff like this, um, just like the straight up any form of like Xbox gamer like online shooter player for example would know people in competitive people formats cheat. cheat they try their best to cheat they try their best to find any exploit they can and if they're not cheating they're not trying but there's just too many of them at the moment for me to see it as a perfectly like to attain what it's set out to be which was just a fun um carefree kind of experience which you can hop on with friends and have an interesting competitive experience with against a whole nother server um that was the promise of it and i don't think it, it hit that so that's one way to return to our original discussion that it was to maybe need some work uh who wants to go next like all this world was an interesting one i wasn't actually expecting that i didn't know that was a problem for other people but i'm happy to see people agree with me therbleton what's yours um I'll, I'll, uh, mine, mine is like a raw and the whole or thing um and so, it's, and, so end game pv relatively... <laughs> well yeah well it, no it's just like your your choices at end game right. it's you could either do like dungeons, return to lower, you know, level stuff, um, do this whole like, you know, this dynamic web that they have in the three different zones, which it's cool. It has a lot of premise. I don't see any execution. But as we've already that. talked about, I, I did not. Well, I, mean, I only saw premise. I what what is the dynamic yeah, event well, it, it's, web well, there? Well, like like we talked about. Well, it's um, you you'll be fighting Duena, but then you also have to secure these other points, or else they might unlock. <sighs> I mean, and like Lissa, that, that cancels out the whole fight. Lissa, yeah, I, I, that's that's I don't, not I don't, enough. For I don't me. know how you could. Po- I do not know how you could possibly fail, Duena. Well, either, either way, like the idea of or was dynamic event webs in that it was like a, a large scale thing where everything would affect everything else to some extent, um, and that does happen. Like in some areas, for example, you have combined effects of, for example, um, I think it was Grenth, which makes you not able to heal properly or some shit like that, and. Either Grunt or Lissa, and then Melandre. Like, Melandre's the worst. Melandre's the fucking... What, who thought fucking that was fun? Brambles. Who thought that was fun? Who thought... Who looked at it and, hey, hey, we have this thing which constantly cripples you when you walk through... Oh, Durin, spoilers. <laughs> um, th- Oops, there is yeah. a ground effect. So essentially a tile set on the ground that, that covers multiple things. But a, just think of it as a tile set, right? As you walk through it, 
at every, I think every other step, it applies three seconds of cripple and bleeding. So, and, and not only, yep. So it's not, it's not like small. It's not like Prince of Persia or anything like that, where the the tile sets that will annoy you are relatively void, but you can jump over them or you can dodge roll through them or anything like that. Um, no, it just goes on for like the entire expanse of a temple, and it grows as you go as you go further. So have fun. <laughs> like the least fun, th- like amongst the least fun things I've ever experienced in a video game was trekking through one of those. Especially as a warrior, I'm used to having permanent swiftness on me in PvE. And I was just angry. I was just angry. I just could You can't have... It was just crazy. That's Melandru, um, by the way. But like, I never think I've been close enough to that temple when, he, that, when it hasn't been down. <sighs> where that effect has affected me. Jesus Christ. The last time that affected me, that temple was um, up. Yeah. But I was doing the Gates of Ara event. It happened there. <laughs> and you you just get so... Well, I don't know. I just get so fucking angry when, when you're forced well, to... Well, is just me hitting three for my great sword <laughs> AoE. Like, for example, um, enemies aren't affected by this. So if you, if they, if you, for some reason, have ended up fighting them inside the brambles, they're just, like, fucking running circles around you and shit. And you can't do anything unless you're ranged. Worst case, like the worst part of this is, it also happens. Check this, Durin. I want to hear your reaction. It also happens underwater. Great. Oh, I didn't know that one. Great. There is a brambles effect (laughs) underwater where you are crippled while swimming. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. But is it just like. I, it makes sense, but it's the least fun thing I could possibly people think hate of. Swimming. <laughs> people hate the underwater combat enough as it is, which I don't understand. Cause I, I love it. I played MMOs Until and I, I played underwater that right. in combat, and it's never fun. And it's awesome in this game. Yeah, but but all right, you. That's not the way to when, convince when people that it's awesome. When you're high enough level, <laughs> we're doing honor of the waves. When you're high enough level, we're doing honor oh, of the God. waves. Horrible. Uh, but let's see you have fun in there underwater. And, and straight up, like in one situation in Aura, um, with the Melandru again, I, I, I want to complain about this specifically so more people know about it and complain about it. Um, there's an underwater section where the Melandru effects in case. So if you're swimming through an area, um, I think it looks like they don't, they're just not on the ground anymore. It's like these pods that, like, um, that's they come up from the ground. You can't attack them or anything. You can't disable the Melander effect in any way. Um, but as you swim near them, they like shoot the projectiles at you. I might be imagining that entirely. But either way, this is in this area, you're permanently crippled and bleeding. Um, on top of that, there are these uh, risen sharks. <laughs> does anyone does anyone know what the risen sharks do? They have they have a um a gets to cripple you. They have a charge attack that is about uh, just a little bit faster than you can move so if you are a normal movement speed you can somewhat dodge it by going up and down and start side to side that kind of stuff but it does about 15 to twenty thousand damage to you uh, if you get hit by the entire charge attack <laughs> and if you're crippled underwater <laughs> you essentially have no chance whatsoever if you're confronted by say three risen sharks me and suki and benny we're swimming through an area. Three risen sharks. Melandra effect. It was just GG. We couldn't do anything. We just wiped on the spot. Great. So what were we talking about again? Yeah, those don't sound fun. <laughs> and then it. Well, I was just trying to say like the there there are the end boss yep. things, but you like the amount of crap you have to do to get to that. Like the the you're doing the same escort mission where they walk like two feet a second, and then they reset like after combat, and it's it. <sighs> it's just all very annoying <laughs> and no one wants to like I, I can usually end up failing it because I can never get a big enough group because no one wants yeah, to do that just, stuff I just the, like, Duena, the Duena event is the easiest and next to Bathas are my least favorite yep yep yeah. Cause that, that was the multiple and, escort missions within one mission who again who looked at that and thought it was a fun idea but um also, it's not multiple. It's I'm like okay, I'm gonna escort this guy from here to to here, and then back uh, back from here to over there. <laughs> no, 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 I have to port across the map to pick this fucker up, <laughs> beat his ass, mm-hmm. drive him on land. Yep. He stops moving. I gotta beat his ass again uh-huh. to get him moving oh, again. Oh, let's let's be let's be quite clear here. What 
after you DPS him a clearly predefined amount, about a third of his health each time, he is then invincible for the entire duration of his long, shitty, stupid-ass trek from one point to the other where you can deep him again. And then his horrible speech... And then Risen come up. You have to kill about 30 Risen. Yep, of course. Then he starts moving, and he stops about a third of the way up the steps. You gotta beat his ass again. Yeah, he so for the, for the record, the temple. for the record, we enjoy this game. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it. <laughs> but not this part. But well, we do love this game. What, like, oh, what's, 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 talk what's about terrible how is... Beat his ass. These are supposed to be like guild events, and I'm not wanting yeah, to do this. I don't, I don't see anyone wanting to do this. Um... But it comes back to like your point earlier. These are supposed to be dynamic event webs, but I don't like aside from those like um those statues and, and the only one of those that is even remotely uh, annoying is Melandru around or there's there's no real gain from there's no real inter interconnection from these. I don't feel the need to do Duena, then Lissa, then Balthazar, then Melandru. Um, you know, I've never seen. Ba- yeah, I've never like done the reward Balthazar versus completely. work. Yeah. Is is just way off compared to I, I think the head right now is SPVP and dungeons, mm-hmm. and then followed by like Wove Wove, and then like or is just no like after you've done one or two times yeah, you're, you're done. done. I, it's if I need karma. I'll go down there. Yeah, exactly. Like or or is the best place to get karma, but at that point you're literally just grinding because you're not really. I I'm I don't have fun in or like the my main fun from or came from. Uh, a couple of dynamic events. They, they, there are pretty cool, some cool dynamic events there. I, I, I will give them that. For example, there's one where, um, I think it's in the edge Jenkins. of Malco's Leap, where there's a camp there which has three, four trebuchets, and the enemy is assaulting that camp to take it back from your side, the the, the um, alliance or whatever you want to call them. Um, and there's a bunch of mm-hmm. Risen guy trying to take it up, but which is which is just if you boil it down, just a um, a protection mission with trebuchets. You have to keep them from like just being destroyed. But the cool thing is um, the enemy has trebuchets as well, and they like spawn a shitload of area effects. And there's not too many of the enemy. So you can do it with three to four people. I, I think it was just me, Suki, and Benny, even though it's probably intended for like 15 to 20. Um, and that was really rewarding to some extent, being able to, like, we, we got beaten in the end, but we, we held out for a long time. Um, and that was fun in itself. Just having like interesting area effects, enemies thrown at you, um, protecting things, but being spread thin over the things you have to protect, but also not being too fucking difficult. That was a very well designed um, event, at least for the amount of people we did it with. I'm not sure what the scaling on it would be like. I, I think I know which one yeah. you're talking about, because I think I had to reclaim yep. that area, because there was, like, we would build siege, and th- this is another thing that, like, that I mm-hmm. really don't like, and it's it's tough to balance, but shit would respawn oh, way yeah. too quick. What the fuck? And uh. <laughs> and then the other thing that I hate, the one thing I don't like about Ore is it's zombies, <laughs> and the one thing about zombies is they run really freaking fast. <laughs> I mean, I'm a mesmer, and I know it's like you know, it's you, know, you can be range and melee. One thing about mesmers, we have two melee skills. <laughs> That's it. Not not two weapon sets. We have two me- like I have an auto attack, and I have one that makes me invulnerable for like two uh. seconds. And those are the those are both the best two seconds and the last two seconds <laughs> of my life. <laughs> um, and then, then three I just Asura zombies just me. kick me when I'm down. And, <laughs> right um, oh man, yeah, but that so there are. Some pretty interesting events in Or. Let's, let's put that aside. But the vast majority of Or is fucking annoying bullshit. Um, my 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 best time in Or, aside from those events, was looking at the areas. Like the areas are beautiful. Getting the vistas there are really interesting. Uh, that's some some of the coolest vistas I've seen in in Guild Wars Two are definitely in Or. Um, and at the point oh, yeah, I was the, getting the, the vistas, visors, I wasn't even looking the at them. Visors leap. Is uh, yeah. Oh, is yeah, that there's the jumping puzzles there that are amazing? Uh, to, so I, I, I haven't even got. I just, hate, I just hate getting right. to them. I haven't. Even, I haven't got the ore yet, but I can already tell what my biggest problem with that area is going to be. Which is and that is from, it. from the sounds of it, there is one enemy type in that entire end game zone, and that is zombie. Uh, no, there's um, there's some I mean, spirits and some ice no, elementals, I, some rock elementals, some fire elementals. I, okay, because the only, the, only, the only thing I've heard people talk about is the risen. Like there are risen everywhere. Oh, but but the risen. That's, Risen is like a, there's more is like Risen a, than anything else. Think of Risen as a palette rather than more a type so, of enemy. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, there's plenty of different types of like I I would not say that um yeah. that enemy type Risen's variation are, Risen is are ever like a, a problem. A species. 
um, there are plenty of different types of enemies, and you have to approach them all entirely differently. And and there's definitely like stuff like establishing uh, a hitting order for enemies. Like if you if you approach a, a group of enemy risen, you you kind of have distinct like you should hit this first and that and that. It's, it's, it's interesting combat. Um, you should hit the one that says he uh, heals everyone. But from an, an aesthetic, though, it all pretty much uh, they all actually same. in aesthetics not too much of a problem either. Like they're obviously all risen, okay. but they they all look kind of different. Like, that that isn't really an issue I have with it. It's more the okay. respawn rates, like stuff where yeah. no matter what you do in or you feel like it doesn't stick. Um, that labyrinth we ran through, where <laughs> the time we got to the other side, the enemies had respawned. <sighs> <laughs> I'm talking about the other side of the maze. I mean, the other side of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we, we there's like a labyrinth. Like it's just, it's just a straight up labyrinth. It looks like a labyrinth. It's made of stone. It's just a fucking labyrinth. Um, near a uh, like an outpost in one of the last levels of, I think it's the final area of Ore. Um, and the, it looks like an, there's an Ore Calcum. Uh, or there was. It resets when they reset the server, so it could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. It, yeah, it, it looked like there was an Ore Calcum at, at the very end of the labyrinth. I'm like, hey, that's probably a rich lodestone or some shit like that. So let's, let's go for it. Um, we go through the entire labyrinth with, like, giants and instants. That was actually really cool as well. Like, you, you go around a corner. Like, we were just, like, waltzing through the, the fucking thing. Walk around the corner. There's a fucking huge giant there. And we're like, oh, God. And we're just, like, slowly deeps it down. It wasn't... The enemies themselves weren't that difficult. Sadly, but the actual events themselves was cool. It was the rate in which they were spawning. Uh, yeah, the problem with it was when we were finished, when we finally got through the um, the labyrinth, there was a dynamic event at the end, which was somewhat interesting. But then once we, by the time we'd gotten all that done, every enemy throughout the entire labyrinth behind us had respawned. And not only was there no Aurichalcum like, uh, or at the end, but there was like nothing else to get. There was like no reward <laughs> from going to that entire thing at all. It got to the point oh, where man. we, when we finally fought our way back out and ran past a bunch of shit because we just couldn't be fucked. There was another guy yeah, like, starting we the dungeon as we were walking out. We warned him. Um, <laughs> wait, wait. I, I think, no, I'm pretty sure we, we shouted into locals like, dude, don't, no, don't go, don't go, don't worry. There's nothing there. And he's like, oh, okay. And then turned around and came back out with us. It was, it was bad. It was that. so respawn rates definitely something or like again if you do those um if you get lists and so so forth they stick for a couple of hours which is good but any of the dynamic events like taking back a supply cap like i feel like those flip just too quickly there's just so much there's no you don't feel like you've achieved anything over a large it's like time. 10 minute cycles yeah it's just also speaking of respawn rates apparently somewhere in the harathi hinderlands there are centaurs that spawn faster than you can kill them <sighs> Oh, do it. No. Were you there for um, that? That's nowhere near as bad as what I, I was talking about. So there was a. I'm not sure if it's fixed or not. But um, when I went to Or with Benny and oh, Sookie, you mean that event? There's a, you mean that event where it was just um, two left, we had two to remaining. Kill, um, I was there. I was okay, there. Okay, cool. They fixed that. They fixed okay, that. Okay, cool. By the way, all right, that's good. But it's no. It's no longer set up like that where you have to get all the enemies dead at one. All time. right. So what happened it's was there wave. was a supply camp. And an event support spawned within that supply camp of these things coming out of the sewers. And they, there'd be like shitloads of them coming out of the sewers, right? And what you had to do is have none remaining alive at a given instant. But. I've, I've had that too in another zone. It's like, it's just like playing whack-a-mole. Yeah. And there's like, there's 20 of us at this yep. like event trying to kill yep. them. It's like, and then another one shows up over yep. there. Damn. And, but for us, I'm not sure if it was as bad as your event, but for us, it took us about 45 minutes with about 15 to 25 people there across an area about 45, no, not, not even 15 seconds to walk from one side to another. All like squeezing like, like fucking sardines, killing enemies as fast as they can spawn. The enemies respawn where it was just so quick that we've hit down to like two enemies remaining. Because there's a counter left. Just to make things worse, there's a fucking counter. It's like four, nine, four, three, one, five, 12, 13, mm-hmm. four. It's, it was the worst. <laughs> we would actually get to the point where we actually killed everything, and it says there's one left, and that's because like it was in the process uh. of spawning. <laughs> oh man! And it's like we don't actually <laughs> see any zombies here. <laughs> what is going up oh, there? It is. So I hope those, I've, they fix those. But again, like, there's this there's this st- stupid shit in Or. So what was the actual point in Or? I, I have a lot to complain about Or, but what, I guess you had a point. No, I just it feel it work. work. Yeah. <laughs> Or need, that, that's or needs what work. The, the subject is right. What? Do, what? Do we, what? We oh work? man. Yeah. 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 Or, or needs work. Um, I, I. It's good, 
because there are alternatives, like or isn't the only end game for people out there. That I think we were talking about this before the episode starts. Uh, we all firmly believe that people who think there's no end game to give us two are fucking crazy. Just, just absolutely, yeah, just batch it. But if if you don't like any PvP and you don't like dungeons and you like rolling by yourself, so, so for example, or is pretty much the only alternate like option for you. Uh, sorry, bro. <laughs> well, I mean, if that's if that's you, uh, why are you playing MMO? It's true. It's true. You're Jeff. Anyway, Durin. Uh, I didn't well, say. I it. mean, like it's <laughs> for people who have like on, on the giant bomb forums. Like it's like I have one hundred percent everything. It's like congrats, you be an RPG. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stop playing. <sighs> be Dragon Age. Have fun. Sigh. Anyway, move on to Dragon Age. Durin. What was what was your pet beat? What was your thing that you think Guild Wars Two needs work? Oh, wow. Um, for me, it's 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 partly for my own benefit because I, I I it definitely bothers me that this is an issue, but um, it's more so to me an issue because it seems like Arena Net isn't taking it as seriously as they should be, and that is uh, um, class balance. Oh man, I feel like with class balance, that's a kind of worms. <laughs> they are playing it entirely too safely with class balance. They're not willing to. It seems like they're not willing to make the changes they need to make to classes that are very clearly in need of work one way or the other. Yeah. And that's a problem for them because they have set the structured PvP up to be kind of this esportsy, um mm-hmm. you know, high like you know, tightly tuned thing. Yep. But it's clearly not there right now. There are some 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 issues and they don't seem to be addressing them. I mean, you, you look at this most recent patch and it, looking through the different classes, like there's not changes in there. Like it, they're making very small, little, minor tweaks Dude, to classes. Even that worse, have there's large changes problems. in here that are literally just fixing shit that wasn't even working correctly. And we're talking about a month after release, like just straight yeah. up traits that didn't like spells, work. Like there, well, and there was like a spell on the elementalist that they've fixed now, so that we can't cast it backwards. <laughs> it's like. There, there are, I, I don't give a sh- like straight up thieves are two shotting people at the moment. How is that balanced? I, I don't have problems with thieves as a warrior, but I'm a warrior. I, that's how about people with less than 26,000 health at any given moment? Like, well, I, I can, I can handle a thief in PVP, but it is a, it is a toss up of which one of us is going to die. <laughs> it's okay though. It's okay though, guys, because they fixed bountiful theft. Uh, it now, doesn't apply 15 seconds of vigor twice. <sighs> so I think it's 15 seconds of vigor is pointless. Oh. Why would you need that much endurance? Oh man. Well, thieves. But now, but now the they thieves. can't stack it. Evasive tanks. Evasive tanks. Because 30 seconds of endurance and that yeah, that's vigor actually, is one of the most powerful. Or vigor, yeah. Um, yeah. But I just find it annoying that, like, yeah, it's like, uh, here, here's the two examples Warriors and, what was it, Thousand Blades? Yeah, 100 Blades. 100 Blades, yeah. Yeah, it was. Well, <laughs> um, but I have no problem with that because, like, it's yeah, you can avoid it's it. Well, telegraph. Like, they, um, they, they, yeah. yeah, it's it's dangerous, but you it's you can sort of like mm-hmm. negate it. With thieves, when they just like spam Heartseeker on me, it's like okay, I will do everything I can to avoid it. Now I can, can like return mm-hmm. fighting. Oh, you just stealth for you know you're just gonna keep stealthing for yeah. thirty seconds until you have all your uh-huh. stuff again. And, and they reset and, the oh, fight. Heartseeker again. Yeah. I'll just, well, and, I'll and just I guess more over. specifically, like it, it's also it's a it's an ability that requires a low level of skill mm-hmm. for a high damage output, and that goes against what this game's supposed to be doing. Yeah, and, and even, yeah. I, the crazy thing was, um, so how th- just to explain things for people who aren't too familiar with PvP, um, how thieves are able to get Heartseeker attacks. Uh, I'll talk about. Uh, Let's pistol whip in a second, but Heart Seeker was ge- is generally oh, a um, fucking pistol whip. Uh, it was it was a case where see that? Yeah. out of the box, if you're just like for example in PVE, Heart Seeker is awesome. It's almost essential for PV like uh, for melee thieves in PVE because it's a good method of sustained damage output in cases where bosses take a good five minutes to deep down. Like you want a good method of sustained high damage output. Um, otherwise, you're not really doing your job as a melee. Um, but the thing is, there are so many percentage-based, uh, multi- like multi- multiplicative uh, additions to damage for the thief. So, just to give you an example, um, there is armor which uh, gives you ten percent more damage when you're at one hundred percent health. 
Um, you can expect to do more damage. I think it's like 10 to 15% or so when you're stealthed. So you'll be at 100% health. So you're seeing a 20... And all these are added, add, additives. So that's plus 25% damage. Then you have um, plus 20% damage when your foe is under 50% health. So that's plus 45% damage. And then you have... Um, there's another thing which is plus percentage damage for how much initiative you have uh, remaining. So... I believe, and above six, I think it was. So I, I, I don't quote me in the numbers, but I think that was another like 10% or something. They can sit up to plus 60 to plus 75, I've heard, percent damage. Percentage damage and, on top of have, anything they're doing. So they're walking around, like at the opening of a fight, they can be walking around with the equivalent of three to 4,000 power. If, if you want to put that in perspective of other classes that don't have percentage damage that increases of the same amount, um, they will be hitting for numbers exceeding 6,000 to 9,000 a hit versus heavily armored targets, or people with 3,000 toughness is above. And considering that toughness doesn't scale as well as, as well as power, you can see where the problem comes in here. Um, so those effects are all good and like perfectly balanced in like uh, in isolation but the entire point of pvp in terms of the thief is min maxing and they accumulate as many of these additive effects as they can so obviously if, if reading that removes heart like um plus, plus 20 percent damage under enemy 50 percent health that's a significant debuff that's a 20 percent debuff to the amount of melee damage the thief can do in pve but obviously you can see where that that you can see the slippery slope there because at, the, at this point they have just so many ways to increase the damage that if they spec that way they're doing huge damage in pvp like this is just, just unstoppable forces at least at the moment to a lot of classes except for maybe the warrior and, and that's like that's not even my issue it's guard. it's the issue is like okay you have all that predetermined like mm -hmm. min maxing and then all it's they one do key. is just put yeah yeah one key, one key. they, they yeah. button yeah. mash yeah yeah it's just, it's just, all it is just straight up <laughs> <laughs> but mash until they can't do it anymore um, than stuff. And when they nerfed Heartseeker slightly, they just move over to Pistol Whip. And Pistol Whip is um, less situational <laughs> than Heartseeker <laughs> and does a stun effect. That, that's that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the screenshot Shinboy posted on his thing? No, what happened? He uh, scrolled up his combat log, mm -hmm. was, I think as big as he could. Yep. He showed how many times he hit this guy with Pistol Whip before he hit him back. Yep. The guy hit him once. <laughs> in about... <laughs> 30 or so attacks. Uh, they got hit him once. Jesus. And each pistol whip was doing somewhere between 600 and I want to say 1,000 damage a hit. Yeah. So the, they stun. So you just, you just keep fucking spamming and it's just over. Um, yeah. Though I've heard pistol whips can do upwards of 4K if you do it right. Anyway. Um, yes, yeah, so the I think that's what... The, I was in a PvP match one time and I think a thief did that to yeah. me. And I went from half health to like a hundred in about a second. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Um, it's okay though, guys. So did they he can't stack because of the retaliation. Yay! Uh, to be fair, I had retaliation on our Aegis, and it gave me retaliation mm -hmm. at the end. He almost killed himself. <laughs> uh, it was like one more attack was going to end that fight, no matter what. <laughs> in someone's way, but um. Yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah. The the thief is, but that's like literally, it's a very difficult thing in terms of balancing the thief because because of that that thing I said earlier, which is that one one change to one of those traits significantly changes other things. Um, but there's other stuff like for example, I I, I hate to to bring up faults with the Mesmeth Thurbleton, but there are definitely faults with that. Um, oh yeah. For example, there's there's a couple I'm things aware. that are just fucking broken with Mesmers. Um, so PVP in Guild Wars Two is. Significantly rewards active um, and reactive gameplay, not passive gameplay, and um, definitely uh, positioning and knowing your uh, terrain very well. That, that, those are like the number one things in PvP. Um, so, okay. So here's, here's something that used to be a thing. A elementalist, a staff elementalist, can spec pure, can spec pure DPS, which is, again, a, a type of play style which I, do, I support. I don't mind DPS players. I don't particularly do it myself, but it's, it's, a, it's a style of play. Um, and they would go to the Forest Niflhel, which is one of the destructive PvP maps. Uh, at, the t at the keep, which is the center point, which is, uh, if people don't know, up, up two sets of stairwells and also approachable from behind. Um, what they used to do was, if you go to the keep... Um, at the top, at the back, there's two like ledges which lead uh, to the back entrance to the keep, 
uh, that you can't walk up. So essentially, if you're sitting on the point on the keep, you can't melee the people on top of those ledges because they just came from the back. So essentially, uh, that was, in to some extent, a, a ranged uh, beneficial position to be in. Um, which is fine because range damage is less than melee damage, and obviously as a melee you can just fucking get out of there. They can't capture the point without getting off their point, their vantage point, which is something I find awesome in terms of balance. The problem is um, in situations like that where a person is usually unattackable because of uh, elevated terrain or zero pathing between your position and theirs, a mesmer summoning a melee phantasm, the phantasm doesn't spawn at the mesmer then walk; it spawns at the enemy. Some of them do. Um, the fant- yeah, yeah, some, some do, some, some don't. don't. The swordsman on the uh, sword offhand does not spawn at the enemy. Right. The berserker for the great sword does. spawns directly next yep. to you. Yep. So, um, yep. so cases where, like, one of the one of the tent poles of PP positioning are in- is entirely invalidated by some of the abilities that the mesmer can have, and obviously. Phantasm has been buffed, and I've seen the Berserker specifically doing about 3,000 damage a hit with its... If he hit with it, which is... An, uh, I've seen a Berserker clear a wall by himself. Um, yeah. Because pe- people weren't paying attention. Yep. The Berserker just came up and pieced everyone. Yeah, and that and you can't outposition it. I, 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 was at, I was at an event where I was a rifle warrior, and I walked up to a Mesmer holding a point at the center of a point, and again, forced into the hill, which I actually love the map because there's so many terrain, like so much to the terrain there, obviously... If these problems were fixed, that would, that would be beneficial. Um, so, for example, he'd be sitting in the middle of the point. I'd come at the top. I'm usually not assailable by a melee or it, it, uh, anything but a ranged. And I can out-damage most ranged classes as a, as a ranged warrior. Um, so I, I'd be at a, vantage, I was at a vantage point firing down at him. He spawned a bunch of phantasms next to me and beat me in the deeps race because they're essentially melee phantasms. I, I obviously I had the option of clearing them out, but then I'm not attacking the mesmer. So that there's like many things that they can do that just invalidate a core ten of Guild Two. Um, that's what that's my main problem. That's that's something I think is actually legitimately broken, and they shouldn't be able to do just spawn enemies at high at places you couldn't walk to. Um, but that that's also essentially fine. There's there's also well, no that's not fine at all. I'll take that back. That's broken. I, I will agree that 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 is yep. an issue, um, and there are some things that like makes illusion like. Uh, not illusions, but well, yeah, the the mesmer mm-hmm. phantasms. That's the word. Uh, a bit of like when you stealth, they still keep, they still like know where you are, and as soon as you unstealth, they'll just start attacking right. you again. And, and but um, so that's one thing, right? But also, a mesmer yeah. is capable of um, attacking a downed opponent with a phantasm, whilst focusing themselves and their other phantasms on a alive opponent. This, Mesmer is the only class at the moment that can consistently win a 2v1 because they can win the down fight. That's fucked up. That's, they're the only class who could do it. Again, again I, I don't think yeah. you should be able to do that. Um, like, for example, if the enemy goes down, you should, you should follow the death rules and your phantasms should dissipate, in my opinion. Um, <sighs> but on top of that, they also, the class which has a large amount of sustained damage... Medium health, medium armor, I think it was. Or do you have low health? Low health or medium health? Yeah, uh, we, we have light armor. armor. Yeah. So, But is, is it low health or medium health? Is it low below? Uh, I, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's hard to tell. It's, it's higher than Ellie's. Much health? It's higher than Guardian. Yeah. Wait, do you have 15k? Yeah, I guess, I guess medium health, health, low. It would be le- medium health then. Medium health. So medium health, low it's, armor. Guardian and Ellie have low. Uh, medium health, low armor. But they also have um, the most ways of implying your visibility. So more ways, I believe, than Thief. Um, they have the most condition spams and more than Necromancer. Um, they have the ability to break targeting that no other class has except for Thief going invisible. And even then, a Thief going invisible is fine because it's a single target. But a Mesmer, when it breaks target, can also spawn, obviously, folly targets like uh, clones and so on and so forth. Um, so they're almost intargetable, especially in one versus one situations. Um, there, there are many things with them which are core tenets of the class that make versing them in PvP s- difficult. And I believe consistently voted the number one PvP class at the moment is the Mesmer. And that, that's for like these reasons. The weird thing with those, though, is a lot of them are fine. Like minor tweaking can, can, can help a lot of those. But uh, in general, like going back to Duran's point, class balance isn't quite there yet. There shouldn't be a class that just consistently beats everything else. Um, and it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be an issue if, if we saw ArenaNet like, clearly trying to work on it, like making some 
some, some good strides in that direction, yeah. like like they care. But we're not seeing that. I mean, here we are a month out, and these are the kind of class balances we're getting when there are these ma- major issues with like fundamental um, yeah, I, abilities that some of these classes have. Like, how is this Heartseeker thing still an issue a month out? <laughs> Uh, how do you nerf Heartseeker and not nerf Pistol Whip? It's like, what are you doing? What? Yeah. Do you not, do you not know? How do you, how do you not give a Guardian a viable range thing to do in World v. World? It's hilarious. Oh my god. Again, that- whenever I see Benny, who's one of our uh, guild uh, leaders and guardians, um, whenever I see him it's using a, a scepter. scepter, or you, I just laugh. <laughs> that projectile move, it's basically a mace with a ranged attack. You, no, because uh, if it was a melee, the enemy couldn't avoid it, but as a range thing, you can literally walk faster than the projectile. <laughs> He's not kidding. If you have swiftness, you will never be touched by a by a guardian using a scepter. Uh, um, yeah, so guardians don't have a viable ranged option. Like, just they just don't. I mean, we could, they just don't have. We could use the three to lock you in place, and then use the two, and then maybe use the one for a bit. But <sighs> it's like an every. 15 seconds thing. Yeah. And the block build, which you and um, Mavis, or Maven, I think, I forgot his name, but the really, really cool guy it, we've met recently uh, with a, with set, uh, with a focus offhand, I think it was Mace Mainhand. That was ridiculous. Um, and the elite that blocks and then a huge amount of block, your heal blocks and half oh, your... Oh, I'm not, I'm not using that heal because it just, right. it might be faster and they might block, but I still like the other heal that yeah. just gives me back but, half But you can, you can note that that is... Probably the most tanky build in the game. <laughs> you just block everything. Yeah. Like, you just have, like, 40% uptime block. block. Everything. It's just like, what the fuck? And the, and the mace one heals you. Yep. In its combo. Uh-huh. It's, it, I mean, you you could be a slightly more offensive take if you use the sword. Mm-hmm. Just because the dash on that does a blind. Yep. But, yeah, just, just straight up... Anyway, yeah, we are hitting three hours. Thank you, Thelvison. But, um, yeah, I, I I agree that class balance isn't quite there yet. And I think the scary thing is, going back to the patch notes from before, um, they haven't really made strides, even a month out, as Duran said, at all whatsoever for addressing a lot of it. And obviously, if you pay attention to what they've been posting in the forums, um, they are admitting to taking a wait-and-see approach for class balance. But I think a month, a month is enough waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Like, and actually, they've made comments about uh, Wove Up as well. It's like, yeah, you yeah. know, it's an issue. That's it. That's, that's literally all they're giving us. Like, they've been so uncommunicative in, in, in just a lot of weird ways. Where I'm just not used to it. Like, the, su- the support on the forum has been uncommunicative, but when I had an issue linking my Guild Wars 1 account with my Guild Wars 2 mm-hmm. account, that turnaround was about a day. I, I think the um, getting back to I think they're like distinct groups of people. Like the balance of PvP yeah, guys so. are entirely different to the account guys. I think the account guys are really nice. Yeah. Like the account guys are pretty cool, and they're usually on top of their shit. But um, it's, it's stuff like okay, so th- this is the thing. I, I I haven't talked about it much in the past, but I knew Keys brought up brought up over this episode. I guess we should talk about it. Um, so there was there's an item or there was an item called the bo- box of draconic armor in in PVE. Um, which is advertised to have a full set of exotic uh, draconic armor. Uh, long story short, it doesn't give you a full set, or didn't give you a full set of, long, of draconic armor. So I essentially lost 10 gold on an item which gave me um, a shit that wasn't advertised. It gave me uh, yellow armor instead of gold armor. And I essentially completely wasted my money. And at that, po- that point, I didn't want to fucking bother uh, PVEing until they fixed that, really. At least not for the, the, um, the loot grind aspect of it. Uh, the point was, like, that, that's one thing. They fixed that item. So the box of draconic armor now actually gives you draconic armor instead of gladiator's armor. Fucking jerks. Three weeks late. But um, the problem is... Oh, they're, they're, not, they're not retroactively going and so giving you the problem. So check this ones. out. Um, I, should, I maybe should have talked about this before, but I, I guess this is a good episode for it. So about, uh, I'd say 100, maybe 100 people have posted on the forums about this problem. So about 100 people have lost upwards of 10 gold, in some cases 17 gold. And some this one dude spent 80 real dollars on gems to convert to gold to buy this item. Oh, jeez. And got ripped off. Then you know it would have been cheaper to just buy the gear by itself. Oh uh, no, it's not, well not not the time. Back at the time, it was ten gold for the box of draconic armor, seventeen gold for the cumulative cost of the gear. It's much cheaper for the box of draconic armor. Um, it, I, I did the math, but anyway, like uh, that aside, like he lost eighty dollars on that. Um, 
So the ArenaNet's response to date, this is from a problem which originated about three weeks back or so, uh, is that uh, they cannot fix the problem because, check it out, I, I, want, you guys, I want you guys to react to this. Um, well, I, no, don't, don't give me fake reaction. But they do not have the ability to back. create or refund items at this time. <laughs> yeah. So, that, like, that, so, that so, so your your workers. assessment of like the back when the seventy two hour bear ends, the reason why they were doing that, that's the only tool they have. Uh huh. Yeah. They, they 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 can't. So this is like this is reminding me of 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 Star Wars. Yeah. In, in a, a sense, where it's like, how do you launch an MMO in this day and age without just basic fucking things <laughs> like rollbacks? Yeah. Or. The ability to refund a piece or to like, if nothing else to refund fucking gold. Let's check it out. They can create they entire that. dynamic they events on the that fly. In. Right. Um, they recently passed that into Star Wars. The ability to refund an item if you bought the wrong thing as long as you did not uh, try and sell it on the auction Exactly. Like, for, for this, right, um, they they made the Hunger Games event again in betas in 12 hours, right? So they made custom yeah. items, made custom shit. I, I, they're, they're apparently reporting to us that the, the, the bunch of people got ripped off um, that they can't like people have suggested hey why don't you just make the item and then just fucking use the in-game mailing system to get it to us yeah something as simple as that and they're like no we can't do that at this time we are working on a fix and, and the best part is they they cannot give us an ETA for the fix well no of course not of course not yeah you know because whatever um, and, and see this, the thing is like like pe- people wonder like why it is that that wow has been has continued to be the giant that it has it's because of things like this where like they can't refund an item to you yep wow has a fucking automated service to do it now through the website <sighs> they don't even have to involve a yeah, person like, anymore it's automated now the other side of that coin is i mean like wow for the first few years didn't have that and well, no back in 2005 that technology wasn't yeah. around no one had figured it out someone has figured it out already it's yeah. possible yeah it's, but it's still not in games. It's it's kind of the argument people have for it's pretty off field here. But Windows Phone Seven, right? Um, <laughs> it came into a market where Android existed and iOS five, I think, or four was here at the time. And they didn't have things four like time, um, yeah. I believe they didn't have copy paste for about a couple about a month. They didn't have oh, wow. um, oh, proper right. multitasking at all for the first year. Um, things like that are now industry standards, and you have to meet them. It's not about whether yeah. uh, other people did it in a specific order in the past. It's about stuff that's industry standards now that you should be able to do. And, and, aside, and moving on from class balance, uh, is there anything else you want to talk about that? Because we are eating a pretty big timestamp at the moment. I want to talk about mine, but aside from that, go. No, no, no. That was, I mean, it, it's a real broad thing. But yeah. It's something that's extremely important. And, and it's just really surprising that they are not giving it the attention that, it, that they should be. I, especially I'm for their own sake. Yeah. It's, it's like... So that kind of branches off to mine because ArenaNet's always wanted. Um, there's two left on the list, so, so bear, bear with me. Mine one's probably going to be pretty short. Um, so they they want to be an esport. They want to be balanced. They want to be have a, a crazy like um, beneficiary. No, sorry, PvP system that benefits the player in a lot of ways, rewards you in many ways, cosmetically, etc. Keeps an equal playing ground, which they failed to do. Um, just, just like I generally have an awesome PvP experience with the hope of having an eSport, okay? So my main thing with uh, PvP as it stands in Guild Wars 2 is, A, uh, you cannot custom match at all. So you can't uh, say, hey, we only we want to make matches of our own with only this one map. For example, uh, at the moment, to fight competitively on Battle for Kylo, which is the third map of the tournament rotation, you have to make your way through the first two sets of tournaments. So you have to beat people on Forest and Devil Hell, and you have to beat people in Legacy of Foefire to get to, to Battle for Kylo. So Battle for Kylo usually has the best people because they've, they've made it through the first two rounds. The problem is uh, you can't practice on Battle for Kylo in any way, shape, or form aside from fucking Zerg Phase 8v8 or whatever it is, 10v10, um, normal PvP, shitty scrub PvP, uh, without getting there in the tournament. There's no way for you to practice. So if you're there with a pug team, you're going to be going up against either a similarly challenging pug team or a guild team, even worse, and just absolutely fucking ruffle stomped or just scrape through a victory in ways that you shouldn't scrape victories. Like, for example, two unorganized masses isn't making any side, either side learn anything from that map. There's no way to practice on the map because you can't custom match. You can't... Um, 
say we want to scrimmage. So I can't say, hey, we have two groups of five. Can we fight each other? There's no scrimmaging system. So top level PvP guys are being funneled into paid tournaments, which is fair a fair system for now, but that'll be modeled or completely modeled when when more people can afford paid tournaments. Like at, at some point, paid tournaments will just become part of the norm, thus completely invalidated the entire like the current competitive scene because the top teams can't really scrimmage each other. They have to just hope to meet each other in paid tournaments. Um that's one side that's one part of it and that's fucked up and they, they've said they'll be eventually looking at that and whether they will anytime soon i'm i'm relatively um skeptical of uh but that isn't even what i'm most angry about that that side of pvp is okay sure your limited systems for now um but that's relatively fine i can somewhat live with it at least for maybe one month or two months more i can i can continue to convince myself that i want to play this game competitively for that duration what i will not stand for though is they want to be an esport and they do not have any form of spectator vote that's my biggest fault and that that to me is not a big deal that's like that's something that would fucking huge deal <laughs> it would be it would be nice it would be okay but it's not I, I, eh. no i i entirely disagree um it's looking at how commented like the pvp community has been getting into PvP full hardcore as Guild Wars 2, especially since people know how good the PvP is in Guild Wars, and Guild Wars 2. But things like lack of custom matches, combined with things like lack of spectator mode, means the only time you see your PvP match is when A, two awesome teams meet up each- with each other by chance in PvP at the same time, same place, in the same maps um, of their ladders, and B, they happen to be recording their own matches. That's the only way people can see PvP in Guild Wars 2 at the moment. Which is fucked. Yeah, but at the same time, like as many of those people as like like streaming has become a huge thing, and a lot of those people are likely on here looking at the the, the people that are streaming on Twitch. I mean, they're like the top two people are Paradigm guys. Like they are streaming their matches, so like it's not hard to go and see that high level play. Like yes, it a, is a pretty hard. Spectator like, mode would be nice. High level play, like but, that is that is one perspective of high level play, but that isn't an educational perspective. Of high level play, um, like. It, it all comes back to like the the advantages disadvantage of spectator mode, uh, and we, we talked about this in the past, which is why I think this this session will be short. But spectator mode for me is more of a learning tool than anything else, and being able to see things like overall strategy and so on and so forth is better served in spectator mode significantly than any other. Because if you're looking at a single person's perspective on Twitch, that's a single person's perspective. Like you only see what he's doing at any given time. If he's the class you want him to be playing, if he's a build you're interested in. Um, it's shit like that. Like, it's, just, it's just a huge barrier to entry for any form of esport because there's no way to learn. There's no way to view that at all. Well, like, like I, I think I think there are clearly um, you know, benefits to having a spectator mode. I don't think it's a make or break thing. I think I, I, it's, that, it's something that's going to be in eventually. They've already said that. I don't think the um, lack of it right now is, is going to like somehow like make Guild Wars 2 lesser of an eSport. I think there are larger issues with them trying to be, trying to set this game up to be an eSport than a lack of a spectator mode. I, I would say that the issues at the moment um, are tied, match, like custom matches in eSport, I'm uh, sorry, spectator mode, that that's the number one issue with structured PvP in Guild Wars 2 at the moment, with a bullet, bullet point. I, Those two have to be fixed. I, I would say it, it, it's maybe like... Uh, Not like not so much the spectator mode, more so the balance. I agree with with the other point. Oh, b- um, balance! But I don't is, think I don't a b- b- balance. They have to fix, but their approach to balance. I, I'm still giving the benefit of the doubt. It's only a one month, and it was one turned out relatively well from memory. Uh, so I hope they bring it back together. But I'm just talking about features they need to add, things they need to improve upon. Uh, custom matches, spectator mode. That, that's where it is for PvP, structured PvP anyway at the moment. Um, as long as as long as custom matches come before spectator mode, I, then I, I guess I can. I can agree, I, I, guess. I actually would prefer but, spectator mode over as custom matches because uh, spectator mode serves a larger audience than custom matches does. Spectator mode serves the people who 
can't get a team together or want to learn, which is the vast majority, or um, or who just like don't have the time to get a team together and, and focus at the moment. So I can notice serves more people than custom matches does. Custom, custom matches serves the guys who are actually doing the PvP, which is also which is a good thing, which is why I say they're tied. Um, but I, I think the community itself would be served by the best spectator, man. Um, anyway, uh, that that was my point take it or leave it but i think the one thing and the last thing we'll talk about today that we i believe we can all agree with since we're all officers or leaders of the of the lincoln force guilds and guilds too is guilds well, yeah, this, this game's uh, called guild wars right <laughs> i i hear the guild wars uh, uh yeah it's, like, it's the second one i've done I, I i i'm surprised like looking at what the fuck they put in this game it's the second well, one they sure took a up to deuce on guilds <laughs> Fuck you. I'm so, uh, so sorry <laughs> to unbinding G as the open guild tab button. Mm. If I accidentally hit that instead of F one more time and it <sighs> kills my frame rate. <sighs> which makes so much sense for you guys. Which makes so much sense. And that's not even that's, that's not even the biggest issue. That's not even issue, near the biggest but, that's, oh my, that's a huge I, I, issue and not even near the biggest one. So dumb. Well, how is there not a guild calendar? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually curious. Like, it's a terrible thing. Yeah. Like all, all the different events, and it's what what like, what bugs me the most. I'm not sure how many guilds have this issue. Is like we don't know how long people have been <laughs> online. There's some people yeah. that like, I think Orlock, for example. St- I still don't know what class he plays, what level, and what professions. It's, it's just, just blank. blank for that stuff. It's like, just unknown. fucking blank. And it's like, well, he's online right now, but I don't know. So Jack. to list out the I problems, think he is a engineer. <laughs> I hear. I, I think he. I, I think he's a char. Baker. No, no, he's an Asura. Yeah, he's an Asura. I remember. <laughs> remember because I think I did. No, that was nominal and. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. the Fuck. to lay out the problems with guilds in Guild Wars Two. All right. So one, um, the actual roster itself is fucking broken at the moment. So if I scroll down my roster of about 500 people, about, say, 100 of those are just blank. There's a name. There's no There's no race or class. Can, there's no professions. Can all the officers now finally invite again? Or is that still broken for some people? I, I know I, Robbie couldn't I, invite for a while. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's fixed. I haven't, I haven't tried to invite people. All I've been doing is just changing people's ranks. Yeah. Because <laughs> they couldn't do invite. that. There's no room left. <laughs> Because we true. don't know who's inactive. Yeah, so so one, a bunch of people on your list are blank, and we have no idea how to fucking fix that. And it seems to be blank. It's it's not like uh like client side because multiple people across the world looking at the same people in the roster are having this blankness issue. Um, that's one. My favorite issue is the unknown location from when they logged <laughs> out. So I don't know if they've logged out on a different <laughs> server or if they've logged out in Heart of the Myth. Uh, so that's one issue. Another issue is because you kind of have to fix that one first, otherwise the ne- next one's kind of stupid. You can't tell uh, when someone has last logged in. So, for example, if you're a guild of 500 people with a with an overflow guild of about 200 people, and you need to start moving people around due to inactivity, uh, you can't really have you don't have any fucking idea of who's played when. You have no idea who your inactives are. Like just absolutely no clue. Doesn't even give you it. Like our, our idea at the start was to track people's achievement process, but considering that uh, like a bunch of the guild is fucking invisible, where we can't see any stats about them whatsoever, that's not even an option. So it's just just shit. Like, how do you manage a guild without that? Another one is another problem with guilds is um, the guild message isn't prompted to the users in any way. They have to open up G and read it. To my knowledge, is that right? Is it is it even is it prompted at all? Even like when you update nope. it. Does that it, I know for okay, certain because I know like <laughs> I know like in WoW like it shows up when you first log in and then if somebody changes it it shows up as soon as they make their change immediately on everybody. I was like, thank it was one. Same th- same thing in Star Wars. Yeah. I just, yeah. How how it would update in your chat log when someone yeah, changed so it. So what is the point of a guild message if there's no prompting system? Like was how what it, what <laughs> what ah oh. um there's no way to organize events whatsoever as a guild yeah, no, calendar, no calendar no scheduling yeah. system there's no um like let, let's say like like, like our case we have a, the primary guild the, and the like mm-hmm. the overflow guild that's like you know for people who aren't on uh, lincoln force 24 7 there's no way to tell um how much people have represented yeah. the guild yeah. when they're online for like Not a week real. or so, so uh-huh. yeah. 
and, and we we can tell there's people like we we get on and like we see okay there's thirty yep. people on, five people aren't representing. <sighs> One of those was Sookie because he forgets to do that when he made a new uh, character makes halts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, just I'm gonna start messaging people when they're not shit. representing. Yeah, and ask them why. <laughs> yeah, just just that that would be nice to know. Just why. Um, so that that's definitely an issue. Uh, obviously, the extreme lack of alliances. Oh, here's another issue. Go on. Yeah, uh, I will say something I do like about Guild Wars Two, uh, mm-hmm. the guild system, is the types oh, yeah. of ranks they have and the level of diversity cool. you can have set up. One issue with that, we like people don't know how to you know uh, promote and demote. <laughs> no, the issue, <laughs> the issue we were having earlier was someone changed the permissions on that so they couldn't demote themselves. Uh. So all of the officers had to do it. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Brilliant. <sighs> so it was me and Shinboy in the middle of a. Not even, oh, sorry, it wasn't Shinboy because Shinboy has his uh, guild chat turned off during. Well, <laughs> I mean, okay. To be fair, in in other MMOs, their ranks while I was dead. Yeah. In other MMOs, you you weren't at least in WoW. I know, for instance, you weren't able to demote yourself within a guild. <sighs> yeah. So um, that that's uh, not. Uh, I mean, there's that also no not way was of available. removing a leader. They have to step down. Um. So uh, one of our leaders in our Overflow Guild is not playing the game yeah, anymore. Speaking of which, Kessler, if you happen to be listening to this, which I doubt which you, you aren't. are, if you are, log into the game, get the fuck out of How I Met Your Mesmer, please. <laughs> um, Thanks. I, I can mess. I can message him once. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That that was another issue for the uh, like the the people in Mesmer wanting to get into Lincoln Force. It's just Duran was like sick, drunk, and then didn't have internet, <laughs> and then uh, New Brahma was. Planning world domination, so it's like we don't know between like those two and Kessler. We don't know who else can invite to how I met your mesmer. So we can't yeah, talk we, get, we don't, we can't. We're not in the same guild. Like how yeah, yeah. So no, no alliances, definitely a problem. There, there's no there's no alliance system. There's no custom chat, which I was very surprised yeah. about. Yeah, no custom. You chat can't just make a new real. chat and like everyone just join this channel mm. sort of thing. Uh, yeah, this guilds are fucked. That one's especially that one's especially odd to me. Because, like, you could almost see the argument of, like, well, the, this person could be on any other server or whatever, except for the fact that in, um, you can in WoW, you can do cross server chat. Server. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and not only that, but with Cryptics games, uh, Star Trek Online and Champions Online, you can chat cross game. Oh, man. Like, I could be playing Champions and chat with somebody who's playing Star Trek. So, like, technology yeah. is available. <laughs> Why the fuck don't we have something as simple as custom chat uh. channels? Like, even if they don't want to get alliances out right away, which, I mean, they probably shouldn't because they have more pressing matters to, you know, as we've been talking about this past hour and whatnot, they need to fix mm-hmm. first. Having just a, a chat, like, system where we can just, like, all right, people just join this chat and we'll make it, like, a, a custom, quote-unquote, yeah. alliance. So we shouldn't have to resort to Steam to be our primary communication method for the guild. That That... That shouldn't even be a consideration. You should have communication methods available and, and shit like that within the game because communities, surprise, surprise, are what run the MMOs. Like, the game can be as good as it fucking wants to be and Guild Wars 2 is a good game. Like, don't mistake me on that. But if you don't support the communities, so stuff like getting uh, the PvE community the shit they need, helping out the PvE guys with endgame armor, um, just having more skins and that kind of stuff, if, if, and definitely guilds, if you don't support the community... With stuff that is essentially, in a lot of cases, almost superficial, but are are intrinsically important, then your game will eventually wear out. And I, I've seen a huge drop rate in the amount of interest for Guild Wars 2 over the last uh, month, just one month already, which is expected to some extent, but it could have been far less if we were able to do guild events, if we were able to get people more um, involved, if we were able to move people between How Many Mesmer and our, and our, our guild. Easily. Yeah. I mean, there were people in How I Met Your Mesmer that were like, they were talking in threads, like they were getting really, really annoyed because they, you know, they wanted to play with this community. Yeah. And they're in a guild with like 10 other people and no one talks because like they all, none of them really want to be there. They'd rather be in the main guild. Yeah. But that, you know, there's, again, there's, there's a, a, it's really hard to communicate back and forth. Like I tried, I hopped on uh, Friday before um, my move and at least got on there, let them know what was going on, why I hadn't been on. Um, you know, Kessler wasn't around anymore. Um, and then just went and spent some of the influence just to get it all out of there. And then said, all right, guys, I'll 
see you in a week, I guess. Yeah. Sorry. It's it's yeah. Like uh, and we can't do anything about it. Like I, I can't join How and Mesmer without Manu getting on invite me there and becoming making me a guild leader or whatever. It's uh, it, yeah. Guild Wars 2, you guys. Guild Wars 2. It's it, it seemed like understandably so, this first month they were still just, you know, like cleaning up and fixing mm-hmm. a lot of the bugs. Yeah. But this next month, they really got to crack down and start like, like adding these is, features that yeah. need to By be in the game. Fixing some of these bugs, they're making things worse. Yeah, some of them are just breaking more things. Yeah, well, it's well, and like, like I mean, this goes back to something I had said. Like, I don't even remember how many podcasts ago at this point, but mm-hmm. um, it was something I said before, and I was it was something else that we were kind of complaining about. And it, this is kind of one of those things that I think the only reason we're even willing to put up with it as much as we are is because we're not paying them for it. Yeah. Like if they were doing this with a subscription based MMO, so many more people would have be, would have be leaving this game. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I, and like, but they can't. But but the problem is, like they they can't lean on that constantly. Mm-hmm. They, they, they can't constantly have this. Like, well, we'll have this out eventually. Don't worry, guys. But you know, don't forget, you're not paying the sub fee. So yeah, you know, just give us time. Like, yeah, time. Well, it, time it, is money too. Like, I I could be spending that time playing another game yeah. that is. I could fall back serviced. to Star Wars. <laughs> We both don't want that to happen. Not even that. It's they they, they released their game like at, at the at the end of summer, right before the big game yeah. season hits. Mm-hmm. And so if pe- like people are just going like, all right, well, I'll start playing mm-hmm. Mop. I'll beat that in a month. Okay, then I'll start playing what like Halo or Assassin's Creed or just, there's just a ton of mm-hmm. games. Yeah, coming and, out. and the thing Connors, is, subscription like, fee or not. Once those people leave, you're gonna have a harder and harder time getting them to come back again. I mean, there's so many Even little things. Like, no um, for example, the speed clear dungeon community. Like, all they want, all they really need, is a slash age to give you time in instance. That's all they need. Like, li- literally, that one thing. If you can give them the time in instance, then they can compare speed clear speeds, like run times and stuff like that. And they can have a community around speed clearing, but you can't even have that. Like, they they can't do that. Well, there's not even a point to speed clearing a dungeon now because if you do it too fast, you're not going to get anything. Yeah. So it's just you, well, I mean, you're you're not going to get rewards, but you can be, still be like, hey, yeah. I beat this dungeon exactly. in this time. Yeah, I mean, I, I, at some at some point, you're not going to care about the rewards anymore, and that's where the speed clear stuff is. going to Yeah, come you're, you're not going to care that you're getting yeah. one token and enough money to repair <laughs> one piece of gear. Ah, uh, so yeah, it's just it's the commu- It's the the interesting thing about what how they're approaching it was too, and I, I want to round out this podcast. We are at like three and a half hours, but um. I think they're focused on making it as a good a game as possible uh, in terms of just like the the, techn- the technology behind it, the shit's working the way it was originally intended to for them um, and that kind of stuff. Whereas we've accepted that it's a good game. Like we love Guild Wars 2 for its mechanics. Like PvP in Guild Wars 2 is awesome. World vs. World has some faults, but when it's awesome, it's fucking awesome. Dungeons are great. Oh, it is awesome. Um, like explore mode dungeons when they're not fucking broken, they're amazing. Yeah, like like every aspect Except of this game cases. is is awesome, yeah. but they, with but some they, they, pretty it's glaring like, faults. The, it's the the major faults that they're not addressing are things that need it to, need to are required for it to sustain itself. Stuff to do with the community itself, like stuff again things like balance, like making like at least give us shit like. What your current observations are. Give us a state of the game. Just give us a state of the game once a month. That would be awesome. Just to tell us what you've observed in terms of like how many people playing Thief, like how how many tournament teams who've won a full tournament or have thieves in them. How that what you're gaining from that in terms of um, observations. They did it for the economy yeah, once, and it's, and it's really weird because like like leading up to the launch of the game, they did they, they were, did they do were a, very they did good. do a thing for current state of world versus world. Yeah. So just give us like, leading, leading up to the release of the game, like they, they were, they it seemed like they were really good at communicating and and kind of keeping in constant contact with the community and stuff. And then once the game launched, they just kind of fucking went silent. Yeah, I, that, there's just shit like that. And obviously, the thing I mean, and I want to beat it down to the ground. They need more community features, like that. They need to fix guilds or at least make them where they need to be, like have them as how they should be. They should have. I still think they need trading because I don't think mail's enough. They need to find out a way to fucking stop these bo- oh, yeah, these mass spammers because I've reported everyone I've gotten, and I'm pretty sure I've received the same like spam email twice, even though I reported them. Um, um, we, I hate to say, during but it seems all, every time I go into lines, you probably have when because whenever you spam, report them, so I just whenever you report them, it's only like a like I think you get they go on your ignore list for like three hours. Yeah, it's just like what the fuck? Yeah. Like seriously, guys, you, I'm still getting. Four out of the six emails I've gotten are spammers. 
These these are males. When we were having a when we were having an officer meeting earlier, I got four messages in three minutes. Yeah, and and, and these are PMs. Four ghost spam messages in three minutes. What the fuck? This is the equivalent of them whispering me. How are you? How is this happening? Um. Well, I mean, to be fair, that's this is sadly enough. This is standard in MMO yeah. right now. I mean, that's just. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. It's an easy, it's an easy it. fix, though. It wasn't happening this bad in Star Wars. There you go. I got maybe. Uh, two, it I got maybe was at launch. Well, it, it was never this bad in Star Wars. Four of those. And that's that's total. a statement in itself. Because I got four of those total in Star Wars. Yeah. I get four of those a day. I, I mean, the, there's an hour. there's enough keywords in those those gold spams. You could just say like, if someone sends like try sending a message with like dollar sign like gold yeah. cash. Uh, like prices. Well, I mean, the thing is, though, is that, it. like, it sounds like it's an easy fix, but if it was, WoW wouldn't still be having gold spammers whispering people, and it does. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. That's I mean, true. It's clearly not an but easy fix. I believe but... that the current filtering in Guild Wars, War, Guild Wars 2 does not even remotely match something close to the filtering in WoW. No, yeah, I agree. Um, it could just, well, it could there is an easy on fix. Just have new Brahma and Bay China. Count as consent <laughs> per fucking day. Yeah. Say so you can't you can't send more than let's say fifty males a day. Um, also, uh, on that point, even though these are kind of conflicting points, there's no way for me to mass communicate with my guild at all. Um, no way to just send mailing lists. Like, uh, why can't a guild leader contact everyone in his guild? I mean, yep, yeah, the Chinese have it. Why can't we like use <laughs> yeah, a mass mailing? They clearly are capable of doing this. Um, yeah, it's, it's, the community itself is the part they're not necessarily well the issue the issue there would be if a gold spammer got inside a guild <laughs> you could spam the entire guild um <laughs> but yeah like, like, the community isn't being helped as much as the game itself is we understand that guild wars 2 is an awesome game it's the community stuff that you need to work on and this is the time to do it because you have to keep these guys past this holiday period if you don't keep them now they're gone because shit like assassin's Creed 3 is coming yeah. out we saw a huge drop off when borderlands came out that's just going to keep happening well it's like yeah they they have a month to get their shit together because that's when people are going to be beating those games and like getting tired. Like, all right, they've completed everything in. I hear there's a, a bear game that came out an MMO with white white and black <laughs> bears. I don't know. I what what? But like when they beat that, when they beat that, they're going to be like, well, I'll try this again. I'll test yeah. it off. So you want me to blow your guys' minds here? Some people are already ninety. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the, the game launched on Tuesday. <laughs> um, uh. I forget whose Twitter feed I was reading. Oh, it's Philip Kolar's. The guy on his server didn't even set out to get ninety first. It just sort of happened. <laughs> like he, he was like he was getting ready to stop, and then he realized he was ahead of everybody, and he went, "Fuck it, I'm gonna finish this." <laughs> uh, and with that, uh, I guess we can summarize by saying, "Hey, Guild Wars Two is a video game. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Met, met most expectations, failed to meet others. Uh, it's only one month out, so we'll probably do another one of these check ins at the three month mark, maybe the two months. But we'll see. We'll see." Um, but thanks for listening. This is Linky Cast. Do you have any plugs? Uh, nope. All right. Uh, Thurbleton, do you have any plugs? Um, Wolvo. Oh yeah, you're fine. reading a Wolvo event tomorrow. Um, what time is it? Um, well, well by the time oh, it will be out. Yeah, this, oh, but we'll be, have one next yeah, week true. as well. We'll be trying. We'll be Mass trying to do like a, a weekly yeah. thing, but well, yeah. Uh, basically, it's just like we'll get as many people in like one of the borderlands, the enemy borderlands, mm-hmm. as we can, and we'll just run yep. around. And have so, some what fun. time is that usually? Let's just let's just say same time next week. Why not? Same third yeah, time, um, same same like, third place. So, what yes. time is that? G- give sure. give me a sizzle. Uh, I, I say I say five to nine on Saturday night. Yay! Pacific time. So, join Leaking Force for, for, for some wolf of action. If you're like a, a guild, like like for example, um, the older gamers at TOG. Um, you guys want to meet up with us? That that would be awesome. I love you guys. Um, and if, if, I think I've told you about them though in the past. But yeah, anyway. Oh, I, I know. Yeah, I run T- them all the time. TOG are pretty cool. There's there's, there's plenty of yeah. what, 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 what if there any rela- relation to uh, um, oh, what were they called? There was a guild on my server um, in Star Wars. It was like the. It was like that. there's old time gamers, the older game, the bunch yeah. of offshoot guilds. Okay. Yeah. But they're cool guys. There was one that was on my server on uh, Star Wars, and they were real cool too. Yeah. yeah. Um. And and they then and they want to be friendly with uh with Bomb, which is pretty cool. Um. Anyway, so yeah, to join us for that if you wish to. Uh, for people in the Linking Force Guild, we are sorting out the inactivity problem, inverted commas. 
uh, within the next two weeks. So pay attention to the forums if you want to make sure you stay in Lincoln Forest without being moved out when you mesmer. Uh, aside from that, uh, you can contact us at thelinkingcast at gmail.com um, or at thelinkingcast on Twitter and post in the threads I make in Guild Wars 2 Guru and Giant Bomb. So, and you can find the Giant Bomb forums or by searching Giant Bomb Guild Wars 2 in Google. Uh, wait a second. Ravin, do you have any, any plugs? Uh, run dungeons with me if you want. I don't care what your class is, don't care what your spec is. Uh, I'm just... not doing Honor of the Waves anymore. <laughs> we promised. <laughs> no more of that. Uh, and with that... Yeah, and uh, oh, oh yeah, no more manor. Uh, Blood Plat with Chin Boy, we will never run manor again. Indeed, Koikis' manor exploring mode is out. <laughs> I'm going to make you run it with me. I'm going to run with you, Duran. I, I, I need to run <laughs> at some point. I need to run at some point. Uh, um, there's a dude in the right, guild, cheers. Quaid Keen. He... He apparently knows how to run it. You can go with him. <laughs> no, I, I like discovery process. I guess I, I, I've if, I, if, I pl- if I plug anything, I'll say um, get into Mumble. Like if you're playing oh, yeah. with us or want to play with us oh, or yeah. anything, like go check out the the thread. Uh, the Mumble information is in there. Yep. That's um, the so if you go to the um, Giant Bomb forums for Guild Wars Two, one of the sticky stages is the Guild threads. So I think it's a, just a Giant Bomb Guild. On the first page of that, we lay out our Mumble details. You can hit us up on Mumble. We're actually hanging out in Mumble a bunch of the time. So uh, maybe not. Well, I haven't been this week because I've been reading. But yeah, Durin, a bunch of us are on there. You can game with us if you wish to. Uh, and with that, thank you for listening to the Linking Cast episode twenty three. We might even continue some of the state the state of the game stuff next week if you guys are interested in it. And thanks for listening. Goodbye. Thank you.